Good evening. It being September 16, 2021. This is the Acushnet Playing Board. Is there a motion to open the meeting? I make a motion to open the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With that, a food, uh, what else? I don't need anything. We had, uh, going to give us a moment of silence. We lost Phil Mello, who was one of our board members for the last almost 10 years. He passed away unexpectedly on August 29, 2021. We just want to say thank you to him. God bless you, Phil. You're up in the big Holly Davidson sky in the room. <laughs> we love this Holly. We love him. We miss him. I just want to give him a quick moment of silence. Thank you, Phil. We're going to miss you. With that, would you be kind enough to introduce yourself, starting from Brian? Brian Dishamps. Dr. Michael, town planner. Rick Ellis, member. Mark Centerizio. With that, under old business site plan review for 540R Main Street. That's our first thing, Doug, correct? Yep. Uh, so the plans were already approved, a uh, certificate of action was already issued, the plans just never got signed when they were approved. I gotta check and see if anybody's here for that one? Uh, I don't think anybody will be here for it, but... Okay. How you doing, Dan? Get anybody for 540 Main, 540R Main Street? Right with you? So with that, do we have to make a motion to sign it, or we already made the motion, we just have to uh, sign it? I'd make the motion, just to... Is there a motion for Ground Mounted Array 540 Main Street, TJA Clean Energy Applicant, represented by Atlantic Design Any Years, Sandwich Mass? I would make a motion that we sign the completed plans for 540R Main Street solar project, as it has complied with all of their uh, requirements. I second, second that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. We don't have to have a roll call on this now, right? You just no. sign it? Yeah, just sign it. Is we'll there a mylar or just a set of plans? Just a set of plans. Okay. With that, pass that to Brian. We'll go from there. The next one. Next one is documents for Gammons and Mattapoison Road, Certificate of Action, Certificate of Approval, and Approval with Conditions Required, BMC Mill Pond Blue Wave Solar. Are those just to sign those documents also? Yes. Doug? Three here to be signed by the board. Uh, this is a matter I had asked to go speak to town council about. They came back with language. Um, I felt it was appropriate. Item number four, oh, yeah, and then seven A. I'm gonna try to remember what we what I'm happy with. <laughs> they they just had it there. Uh, lawyers produce some. Um, some language and then I, I spoke with They them. only want to fight 7A? Uh, they wanted to, well originally they wanted to fight 7A and then uh, item number four and then after speaking with town council I got, they were good with what town council had to say. I felt it was good and, and this is the final product. A lot of pages here, Brian? Yeah, there's uh, actually this 12 all together. Yeah, that's not bad. <clears throat> My hand dies out the floor. You know, brother. If, yeah. if this is a. Um, I'm trying to combine things here now. This, this thing that the building commissioner is not happy with, that the project's not complete and they wanted to sign off on it. So I can't that's say. Not, that's not. That's, that's a separate project. No, I know, but I'm, I'm, if the conditions are the same. Why can't he just issue a cease and desist? That's right. 
I mean, if the things are not in compliance with the plans, I, I mean. I understand completely. They don't want to do anything, right? Except you guys went out and visited. You yeah, and I went out with Jim. Uh, I mean, like, that's, that'll be on the last for the discussion. They have three people here for it. Mm -hmm. um, but Which they, one is this now? The, uh, the one that uh, Rick's talking about is for a 0 and 88 wing lane. And Jim and I feel like they're not in compliance with what they displayed on their site plan. Mm -hmm. The visual barrier isn't there. It looks very unfinished. Like the solar, the solar array itself is complete. Yep. Surrounding the site isn't complete. They have their own issues they have to go through with Pat. I have a list of the issues no Pat no has okay. stated. Oh, we'll wait till then. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Are you okay with that one from Gammons and Mattaposa Road? Number four and seven? Yeah, yeah, to okay. me that's fine. Uh, so is there, we have to make a motion to sign that one from Gammons yes. and Mattaposa Road with that correction on number four? Voting by town council. Okay, I would make a motion that we sign the certificate of action for Gammons Road. Uh, as modified and recommended by town council for condition four and condition seven a is there a second second all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. unanimous no. i'll start them all start them all up there yeah it's just all gets no, no. these just need your signature these okay, okay. Nope, it's just the one page. One. Okay. Yep. I just have three of them for it to be yep. signed. Groups are getting rowdy out there, huh? Yeah. So is David joining us next month? Not till next month because he has that. Did you get a packet? From yeah, I did. 301 yep. Berry Hill? Yep. It depends on how long we string him along on the project. That's a promise. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a nice guy. Like that. <laughs> well, you know, somebody gets elected and then they yeah. don't show up for months. I mean, why should we do anything for him? Right? <laughs> 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 and speaking of that, while we have a lull in that action, since uh, Brother Phil passed away, if there's anybody out there in TV land that would like to take the position on the planning board, please send your application in to the selectmen that you would like to be part of it. We could show you somebody, they'll probably put it, advertise it in the paper, and et cetera, et cetera, but we have many of Kushner residents out there. and. If you'd like to, please feel free and come in. We'd be more than happy to uh, talk to you. Thank you. The next one is Dorman Drive. We don't have to have anybody. Let me check and see. No, nope. same situation. Uh, Can we hold off on that till the end? Yeah. Okay. Who, who do we have coming in? Discussion for Ground Mountain 550. Are they here? Uh, they should be, yes. Okay, so that's the first one I want to bring in? Uh, yes. We'll bring that one from Peckham Road at the end, okay? Oh, that that's just uh, signing paperwork. Right. Yeah. We'll get these people. We get a little more audio. Here. So mm -hmm. this is three thirty and five fifty main, right? Is that what this is? Three thirty and five fifty main, correct? No, not the one you're signing now. <laughs> that one's Mad Road. Okay, gang. We got three thirty and five fifty main street. Anybody here for that? Come on down. You would pick oh, what did I do with it? I printed it. They call me through an engineer. What are we doing? Come on in. How you doing, gentlemen? Introduce yourself, who we are. You want to put yeah. stuff on the plans here? Do you want to show me the plans? No, you can. Yeah. Uh, I'm Greg Carey. I'm with uh, Con Edison, with the developer of uh, both uh, projects. 
through uh, one at 355 Main Street, which we've got a special permit for, and the other five, five just three of these. 50 so meters. So just yep. three of these? Yes, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. I can date them right now, yeah. it's fine. So basically what we're, um, what we're here for is the, the project on 550 Main Street was originally approved as a two megawatt array, um, but due to uh, issues with the, uh, the interconnection, we did get approved for a uh, reduction in the size to a one megawatt project. Um, and the, the discussion tonight is with regards to the, the cash surety that we would need to post for the for the two megawatt project for, for the decommissioning. Mm -hmm. um, the, the cost was set at um, what was eighty seven thousand for the, for the two megawatt project, um, three fifty five Main Street, so one megawatt project, and that was set at fifty four thousand. We we're just looking for well fifty four and some change. Fifty four seven fifty. Yeah. Um, a reduction in the required surety for this one since we're only building one megawatt instead of two. The, the is this the one at 550? This is, is the one at 550. Is the disturbed area about the same? Yeah, it has, five, has 355. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, sma it's smaller. I can show you from what we had approved. Um, this was the previously approved fence line, mm -hmm. and this is the, the current fence line, and we've also pulled in the, uh, the limits of clearing. As well, going this plan now, right here. This was the this was the previous approved fence. Okay. This is a limit of clearing now, mm -hmm. right? That's, yeah. yeah okay. um, for the for the re, for the so revised it project, it will be a smaller. Project. How much how much smaller is the disturbed area? Um, it's like maybe it's probably 80 or 90 percent of what it was before it's um it went from eight the defense area will stick with that was um was 12 and a half um just over 12 and a half acres mm -hmm. and it went down to um just under nine acres so mm -hmm. it's like a 75 percent okay smaller size the entry road's about the same correct So what you're asking us is you want to lower the decommissioning. Everything else is fine except for that. Correct. correct. We're right. just looking to so, to be consistent with the other one megawatt project. So we project. have to figure this out in, with a calculator we're, or here with a calculator. Uh, no, no, I do not have my phone. <laughs> here. Yeah. yeah, just what's what's seventy five percent of the previously approved. Uh, what was the uh, previous 12, 12 acres or so? 75% of all of the, the, uh, of the decommissioning the costs. Yeah. Oh. 70, what was the 75% of 87,000. Was that on both? 65,250. Was the two megawatt. Yep. The one megawatt was just 54. Oh, one, this one's 550 main, right? Correct. Correct. Okay, yeah. good. We're not trying to change anything on the other one. Yeah. 330 stay the same since we're talking yeah. five I mean, seven, seventy five percent of what was previously approved is sixty five thousand two hundred and fifty. Would you come up with? Well we were just trying to be consistent with the other one megawatt project, which was, was fifty five thousand fifty four seven fifty. Yep. Right. What was approved by the planning board for five fifty was a two megawatt project. I understand. And now we're gonna build a one it, megawatt. I, I mean most of the decommissioning is really involved in, in Restoring, Remove, re the restoring the, the place back to its, restoring the site back to the way it was, or not just raped land. Uh, I mean, you're 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 about seventy five percent of what you were before. It seems like that's what the uh, what the number should be, sixty five thousand, which is two hundred and whatever, which is seventy five percent of what your previous area was. Rich, do you remember uh, what the size of 355 means? Well, I'm just going by this one. You had an approved number for this one of 87,000 something. Yep. You're reducing the land area or reducing the disturbed area by uh, generously. It's yeah. probably not quite 70. Yeah, it's 69. It, it, because yeah, you, you've still got the you've still got the road, yeah. which is the same for both of them. So it's not like the whole project is getting getting reduced. I mean, I, I would be. I would be happy with the sixty-five thousand two hundred fifty dollar number. Again, seventy-five percent of what you had before. 
Let's run. Let's just run the exact. 8.85 divided by 12.63 is 70 percent times 50 uh, times 87. 87,000. Plus the road is the same, so it's actually more. It's actually more than that. I mean, this is this is exactly the same as it was. It's, that this isn't this isn't reduced by. By, uh, and just so you know, this is an existing driveway we're using. We're, mm -hmm. not, we're not building a new driveway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's sixty-one. Yeah. I mean, I, I would I would be satisfied with sixty-five two fifty myself. I mean, again, uh, without getting into having another having an engineer look at it and, and go through it in detail, I don't I don't know that that's really necessary. Uh, Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, you, say, you save the cost of the engineering review that way, so it's yeah, kind of yeah, it's kind, right. yeah, it's no kind of a wash, you there's, know. There's no need to do and that. lose another month or two. Yeah, at least yeah. You get it in or, place. or more. I mean, we've had trouble getting people to respond to our request for work. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, we're looking into another. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Peer review service. Peer yeah. review person, another company. Because we've just had so many solar arrays and they've been joined. So if you agree upon sixty-five grand, sixty-five two fifty. I would. I would make a motion. I would make a motion. Even. Even. You want to make it even? Is that okay? No, I'll make it uh, sixty-five two fifty. Okay. Is okay. I'll good try to work. save you two fifty. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to get. I mean, if you look at it in, in a, uh, not in today's dollars, but twenty years out, if this thing. It gets abandoned because nobody's making any money after it anymore. I mean, it, it probably should be prorated to you know the cost or the value of money 20 years out. So this is really a bargain as far as I'm concerned. Even at 87, I would make a motion that we approve uh, a reduction to $65,250. I second that. Discussion. You guys okay with it? Yep. That's okay. Fine. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous with that. All right. The decommissioning rate will be sixty-five thousand two hundred and fifty. We'll do a revised, uh, uh, you know, that agreement we had to get yep. done before with the signatures yep. and stuff. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll draft that yeah. up and have it ready for next meeting. Put that figure yeah. in there. Take the eighty-seven out. Yeah. Yep. Sixty-five two in the world. Absolutely. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Sounds patient. good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Um, no, on an, sorry to keep on another right. matter. Did you um, sign the blue wave? Uh, we just, signed, thing we for, just signed a couple of things. Yeah, Hold for um, Gammons Road. Yes, I did. Okay, yes, great. I have that right here. All right, so you gotta do whatever. You gotta file that with the town clerk. And yeah. Okay. Once it gets filed with her, uh, we'll get right. a cut. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Have a good one. Bye bye. Have a good night. I can go get the next one. Deep Work Estate. Yep. Jed Yep. I'll get it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Oh, that's what everybody's here about. What's that? Deep Brook. Deep Brook? What's this about with Deep Brook Estates? Uh, it was kind of hard. Uh, she'll probably explain it better. What's that? You don't want to know. You don't want to know what? Deep Brook. Oh. I, is, it, is this the this subdivision? Is yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's just get for it. Plus, I, I did not vote on that, so we well, only got two members here. That's a problem. Well, you, you're, you're just, just going to discuss. You can, you can figure it out, correct, Margaret? You're well, at least let me. Uh, you're going to discuss. Discuss you want, it in, yep. in any event. That's then, fine. Uh, I don't know when your next meeting is, but all right. Um, Let's introduce yourself for our wonderful camera here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Margaret Shihara. I represent Michael and John Costco with regard to Deep Brook Estates subdivision. Now, is this all the litigation done with this, Margaret? Well, that's what we hope to accomplish. But we need to, we have one piece regarding the uh, the utility the uh, utility easement. So um, this was the plan that the board approved back in December of 2017. Oh, John, John is 96 years old. I talked to Mike today, and John is losing it quickly. I probably won't even be around at 96.
96. <laughs> <laughs> a little pessimistic. Oh, I don't know. 96, that's, 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 that's pretty well up. Pushing there. the limit. Well <laughs> so, um, um, the definitive subdivision plan gets approved. Just the lotting sheets, as you know, get recorded. So just sheet one and two showing the, the actual layout. Um, the rest of them, sheets one through the rest of the sheets that are not the lotting sheets. Um, you are could speak up just a little bit more. Yeah, you they're actually take not. Your mask off, you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're actually not recorded, but they're all signed by the planning board. Okay. So the. Um, in the area of the, um, what I think of as the power grid easement, this is where the high tension lines yep. come through. Um, originally, when it was approved, there was a request for a waiver to do uh, overhead utilities, which are, um, uh, I don't want to say deviation, but your, your planning board rules and regulations um, call out for underground utilities. So, this area here was shown as um, overhead going through the 210 foot power grid easement. And um, at this point, we want to do this as underground utilities. So um, I have, we have before Eversource a uh, request to get a license for approval, which we would have to have gotten anyways to do work here as underground, an underground service right. for the subdivision. Those are going under the utility lines, correct? Well, uh, it's going underground, underground. Right. Yeah, because okay. the utility lines evidently um, are in the, in the world of utility lines are relatively low. So in order to go overhead, you now have to raise their utility lines. And underground, you know, probably works better anyways. Um, so I apologize when I started to look at this I realized that I need a magnifying glass to look at it <laughs> <laughs> so I have a magnifying glass with me I do with them um, what is it that you're exactly looking for Margaret what can we do if so what I'm looking is, for is did they settle this in court between the two people no, we're trying. We're trying to. It's not okay. So, but what is need, it that you're looking? I'm for? I'm looking for an approval. This is the um, uh, proposed letter for us to um, do underground utilities, but without having to come back and do a um, uh, a modification to the sheet sheet mm -hmm. eight since it, since it wasn't recorded. This is what I'm, this is my proposal. So the status right now of Eversource is we applied to get a license for them for the underground utilities and we anticipate getting that soon but they have a lot of requests and they <laughs> there are some people ahead of us but mm -hmm. I'm not anticipating any problems with that. The, um, the engineer Ron Laguerre who's been working on this is okay with it but the way Eversource seems to work they have more than one approval that's needed. And I, we think understand. That's what, yeah, I think that's what we're waiting for at this point. Our biggest challenge tonight is going to be because we only have two members here. Yeah. Rick Epstein and Phil Mello passed away. Oh, no. Yes. On August Unexpectedly, 20th. yeah. Unexpectedly. Yeah. He was younger than all of us and stronger. So, what oh. our challenge with that is, even though we can vote on it, Rick abstained from this. Yeah. Okay, so you only have two. I'm sure we'll agree upon this, but there's nothing we can do tonight, Margaret. Oh, as boy. Far we well, can well, well, let me just throw this out, Mark. I mean, I mean, you really, you already, you already gave him a waiver to do the yep. overhead. He just wants to do underground in that section. Yep. Right. No waiver required. Um, I certainly, if it would help them out, I certainly would be willing to sign it if you think that that's good enough to get you through the process. Is that okay with you, Margaret? Yeah, I, I, that's up to you Brian, as to whether you want to you, participate or not. How do you uh, yeah, I, I don't I, think we let, had... Let, frankly, John, let, John, let John and Mike know that I tried to help them out. That's <laughs> okay, all I... I shall. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because my recollection is I don't think we had requested that you... So it wasn't coming from our end. I think you, it that was, was from your, Rick's No, I, from I, your, there's some history your, between parties, and yeah. I just w didn't want to be seen as obstructing their 
uh, ability to do the subdivision. Yeah. And and likewise, I didn't want to put myself in a position where, you know, I I, I didn't want to say anything. Well, that's not what I'm supposed to do as a member. So right. the easiest way was just to abstain. But right. I certainly wouldn't mind, you know, participating in signing whatever document you need to sign to get that section of the utilities underground. Yeah, you uh, if, if you think Doug, that that's you an opportunity to read this? That's the first time I'm saying okay. it. You yeah. should read it and take a look, quick look at it if that's okay. Yeah, no, I've been... I mean, obviously, Eversource does not want overhead lines that close to their transmission lines. Yeah, the, you know, so I mean, that, that's really, yeah. that's really, it's really just a practical concern from Eversource, which nobody was aware of when the thing was signed. Yep. And it's not, they're not asking really for another waiver, it's just a slight change in one section. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that no. will actually put it more in compliance with the rules. Well, I was just going to say that it's sort of a reverse yeah. thing. Yeah. If we <laughs> needed a waiver to yeah. go with overhead, yeah. we would not have if we had originally yeah. come exactly. into the underground. And, um, Brian, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, absolutely. Doug, how do you feel? I'm comfortable with it, yeah. Okay. That makes Is sense. the language okay? Uh, from what, what, what I've read, what I've read, it, it sounds pretty good. And I mean, like they said, they got a waiver to do that. So yeah, exactly. Really, we're just going back to what yeah, should be on the ground from the get go. So we're all good. Yeah. And, and in any case, really I, I don't. I don't think that the What's planning that? board is really in a this position the that they should be asking. A I have one other. I have one other question that, 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 that is going, going to be a safety for problem. For, yeah. you know, exactly. for, for electrical right. transmission. So I mean, it, it, it's kind of a moot point. Yeah. yeah, and your plan actually does say something about coordinate with local utility. I think you've always kind of anticipated that uh, we can improve what we can improve. But you know what? Ever source. <laughs> Ever source does whatever they want. Yeah, well, right. I don't know if they do whatever they want, but they're, uh, they're pretty, 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 pretty much. They, well, they don't move until they feel that they, they are forced to, to move. Yeah, uh, from money. Yeah. Okay. It costs them more money to go underground, so they're, they're not going to do an extra. It's, if John's involved, there won't be an extra two feet of underground done. Hey. My, fa my, my father and John were from the same era, and that's Depression era, and no, none of them do an inch more or a dollar more than they have to. Well, it's just a, it's a, it's a generational bad. thing. I, well, I think so. Not thing. It's not a personal thing. It's, it's a generational thing. Throwing away Is there a motion? I think you're going to make the motion. Yeah, you make the motion. Uh, yeah, I make a motion to accept the uh, proposal to go from overhead to underground utilities at uh, Deep Brook Estates. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Wonderful. With that, we'll sign these. Now, do you have anything else, Margaret, you'd like to talk to us about? Yeah, the oh. one that has the plan attached is the one I wanted to, to get get signed. Okay. Yeah. That's, so yeah. it's this one, this, this one right here? Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you have a copy of that plan, too? Yes, I do. I have okay. a bunch of copies. Of is that this one right here? Yeah. Okay. So, so I have on file. There's one for Thank you. you. This one for you, as I said, when I looked at it, I said, oh, It is. Today is the 16th. Yes, correct. Okay. 9, 16, 16, 21. And the second thing you'd like to talk about. The second about. thing I'd like to talk about is my understanding is, and I was not working on this at the time, that there had been a cash bond, which I think was actually a check at the time, okay. from Mr. Costa for, I believe the amount was about 23000 And I don't know if that um, was a security for the work or if it was for... Um, what do they call the um, well, what it is, is on a subdivision, we have X amount of dollars per feet, linear feet of a roadway. Mm -hmm. And I presume we must have put X amount of dollars up for the roadway, mm -hmm. and this is the remaining amount of money left in it. 
but I don't believe they release it until the road is done. It's concluded. That enables us to hire, uh, to get engineering services to inspect the road and determine if the materials that used in the construction of the road were the correct ones. So, so we still have, op we will still have monetary obligations uh, until this road is completed. So the question that I had then is, our, our plan is to sell this as one subdivision and not actually um, uh, do actually the construction ourselves, yeah. right, at this point. And so um, if that happens, then um, I think that we're not on this the would, and I'm not a lawyer, and Rick could probably, until this road is done, whoever buys it mm -hmm. will have to take that portion of the money and give it to the Costco's. Okay. Because without completing the road, I don't believe we can release the monies for it. Oh, okay. I will have to double check. It, yeah, yeah. It, really, it really doesn't matter to us who, who builds it or who right. owns it. It's really just a matter of, of being able to hire engineering services to check that the road construction is proper. Doug, I mean, whether, whether John wants to get, you know, 23000 yes. bucks back from the seller, reduce the price of the thing by 23000 you know, or whatever, the, there still has to be a $23,000 amount. Uh, that the town has in escrow, or twenty-three thousand minus whatever has been used of it so far for engineering. Yeah, and that I sort of that went off my radar. But I, that I was one of the things. I think that was the remainder. They had put X amount of dollars up, yeah. and this is what remains in the escrow account. I believe that's what it, how it works. Yeah, I think yeah. some of it was probably used for engineering review. I, Could I have think been. I, you know, I think that's what it is. So. Um, is there something that you need to check that might change that or check with? Uh, I, I, let's I, let Doug come back and he, he can check with finance, but I believe that's part of the rules and regulations. Yeah, I mean that, that that's got to be that's got to be in place uh, so that the road can be inspected when it's constructed. You know, if whatever joint, whatever deal he's got to make with the this potential is still purchase. in litigation, correct? Mm. Yeah. So it's it depends on who develops what and where and why. I think whoever goes to buy it will have this as part of the deal that they give this amount of money to the Costco's. Yeah, I mean, if, it, if I'm just for the sake of argument, I don't know what the exact number is, but mm -hmm. it may mean that uh, John's entitled to his his uh, purchase price plus twenty three thousand dollars. Right, because he's leaving yeah. it on the table. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, because otherwise it gets difficult to coordinate. All right. Because it's still in litigation, Margaret. If it yeah. wasn't in litigation, and there was a finalization, and Mr. A bought it for Mr. B, mm -hmm. and they reconciled this price and put it on there correctly, then it would be fine. But until that happens, you're still in litigation. I just figured you would want a copy of that, Doug. Yes, absolutely. And Margaret would want a copy of that. Yes, please. Yeah. Would you like the original or? Oh, uh, yeah. I think I get the original. That is the original. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the same thing. We're just going to yep. sign I one just for us. Wanted copies for well, we're going to yeah. sign an original for us. Yeah, so you have a shield your one. one. Yeah, in your folder. Well, all right. So that was a little different information than I thought. I was thinking that once the conveyance took place, that uh, time money wouldn't be in there, but uh, 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 all right. Um, no, I said I don't want to throw you over. Thank you. A bunch of people. Here. I don't want to throw you up, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much, gentlemen. You're welcome. <laughs> Next one, zero and eighty-eight wing lane. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think I, I'm 68 now. I think when I was in high school, John was working on the first part of Deep Brook Estates. It might be yeah. downstairs. Here we are now, right? Yeah. I didn't realize how extensive it was. Because I've only, it's a, I've only known this piece. It's a huge piece Mark, of land. Yeah. They're, they're downstairs. As a matter of fact, I remember. John was telling my, my father a story about 
when he was doing the construction because John, he physically was out there with the machine digging trenches and <laughs> moving dirt. Well, he went out there in the middle of the winter time, it was like Thank zero you. degrees out with his excavator. Oh, yeah. Took it up and started it up. The boom just cracked in half. Wow! It's, it has oh to warm. God. You have to warm the boom yeah, no, when, when it's that cold to save some space. because you know when you move it back when you sure. put stress on the boom, it will eventually heat it up. But if you just take it out at zero degrees and hit the hard ground, it cracked. <laughs> okay, introduce yourself. My name is Eric James. I'm with uh, CS Energy, the project manager. Andrew, who's also with CS Energy, um, and we have Christina. Christina Tapia from CV North America. Right. So from we are CV North America. That's so we're CV. from the EPC contractor of the solar field. Uh, we, we built the field basically as a general contractor, and CVE is the owner of the field. Okay. Oh, good. So um, I'm not sure exactly what you have on the agenda here, but essentially we wanted to come here today to. Um, show that you know we're fully invested in this project and i realized there were some concerns from the building inspector in regards to the witness test that we had scheduled for yesterday of the project which is essentially a uh, recloser protective test to ensure that the facility has been built properly and to ensure that the energi energization of the facility when it happens goes smoothly um, so I brought here some, some plan sets, I have the conditions, and um, I guess at this point I'd like the board to express any concerns they have um, from your perspective. Well, I mean, I, I, assuming, assuming that the, I don't remember all of the conditions of all of the approvals that we did, sure. but most of them basically said that it had to be built according to the plans, and if it wasn't, the building inspector had the right to order a cease and desist. So on the project. So if he's not happy, he's our person in the field. If he's not happy with how it's being built, I think you need to work with him to make him happy. Sure. Or or else he's he's obligated to issue a cease and desist to stop the project until it comes in compliance with the plans that were submitted. Understandable. And I guess at this point, both CS Energy and CVE are a little confused as to how we're not in compliance. Um, that's essentially why we came here. Um, um, so we have plans that were submitted which were approved with the special permit those plans were taken and used uh, slightly revised to issue an IFC set that was submitted to the town back in September of 2020 and that set was used to issue the building permit um, you know that set was signed off by the planning board and all other relevant departments for the project mm -hmm. and um, we have construction constructed the field in accordance with those plans and we're really curious as to what the concern is really. Do you have well, the as-built mylar? Sorry to cut you it, off. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Sure, so I, at, at the last notice, so I was I, and, and I, I, I understand what you're asking, but this board has not seen the project. We sure. haven't, we haven't seen, we, we haven't gone out there with the plans and, and seen what, if any, the differences are between the plans and what's done. We sure. are depending on the building inspector to do that. Sure. He is our he is our eyes, eyes on the ears, and enforcement officer. Nope, understandable. So, so I was hoping he would maybe be here to express his concerns because, to be honest with you, I still am a little confused as to what they are. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this well, is a I, survey I, as built. I'm not trying to cut you off. I I, I cannot render you a meaningful opinion or direction because I don't know what the differences are between what's been constructed and the plan that was approved. Me the neither. <laughs> the building inspector does and you've got to satisfy him, okay? Yep. We're going to be looking for a letter from the building inspector that he's satisfied with the construction of the thing and that it conforms with the plans that were approved. Sure. So, well, we're, we're not we're not the right parties to be talking to this. Okay, I'm talking to you about this is the way I feel. I mean, that's just my feeling. No, you know, I, mean, I, I mean, none of us have been out to the site to see. We don't know what, what's not I'm, being met here, and we're not the enforcing authority. Mm -hmm. Right, it's, it's Doug. You yeah, Doug was there. Yes, I, I, I've been out there, and our, our main concerns are with the visual barriers, and we we voice those concerns to you. And then there's numerous concerns on the stormwater end of things. And talk, I talked to Pat earlier, um, so. 
as part of the plan stated, you guys weren't supposed to disturb any of the land. That was part of it. The land was disturbed. The boulders that were removed from the land were dumped into the wetlands. The storm basin wasn't constructed to what was spec'd out to be constructed as. So if I could just stop you on those two right now, just before we get too far ahead. Um, you know, the storm basin um, was submitted on the IFC set, which uh, was approved with the building permit. Okay. And there was a slight difference in the basin in the plan that was submitted to the building uh, department for the approval of the permit. And there was a culvert added because it was a DEP requirement that our civil engineer had to add. Okay. And that plan was approved and it's built per spec in the field. Did it show boulders approved. in the detention pond? There are no boulders in the detention pond. Well, like when I, when that's I, not what I'm when hearing I, from when you. I walked so there, out, when I walked so there's out boulders there. right here on the plan, which are shown, right? And this is the, um, I'm sorry if that's not the right the right plan. I, I know Pat has concerns with that, and we, we have a, a meeting with him next week. He wanted us to get a drawing prepared for him with the wetland line and, and to again, show him. I'm going to repeat it. I'm not trying to give you a hard time. Sure. The building inspector is the enforcement official. You have to satisfy him that the plans and the construction are in conformance. If your screening's not the way the show is on the plans, then You've, you've got to work it out with him. You've got to change your screening. If there's material that's in the wetlands, that's not what's shown on the plan. You've got to work it out with I, him. I understand that, sir, but at this point, what we're saying is that there are no differences in the screening, there are not boulders in the wetlands, and there is no difference in the basin from what was approved. And uh, Jim, when he came to site, I was expressing these opinions from <laughs> what we have submitted. Yep. However, he has his opinions on it, and I understand that maybe the trees might not look in, in person like they may look on a plant set. You know, they're four foot tall trees on a two foot tall berm mm -hmm. and they've just been planted. They're not fully developed. You know, they might not provide the screening at this point, which they will in the future. Mm -hmm. However, I guess our question is at this point. Are they the same species and the same spacing as shows on the plants? Correct. Yeah. Then, then you need to go over that with Jim. You know, I mean, I, I right. I, he's shaking his head no. I, I mean, just being out there and looking at the berms, I and obviously there was a conversation with UMass that had had happened. Yeah, I, I'm not satisfied with the way the berms look personally. And on the plans, it stated there was going to be multi place around the around each tree. There was also supposed to be three turnbuckles that were placed on each tree. That hasn't been done yet. There is overgrown vegetation all over each berm. Yep, which should really have been combated. Which yeah. should have been com combated with the mulch. Because usually what happens is they put the carpet down, they lay the mulch over that. Um, in addition to that, the plans show that the trees are going to be planted on top of the berms. All the trees aren't planted on top of the berms. They're staggered, and if they are staggered, then the berms should have accounted for that in the width. That, that's our issue right now. Um, in the meantime, if, if whatever Jim, other other concerns Jim has in terms of this, um, obviously. We're, yeah, we're not going to overrule Jim at this at this table. Okay, you know, no, we're, that's we're, understandable. We're depending on him, you know, to He's make the proper decisions and sure. make sure that the thing is built the way it was supposed to be built. Not to be disrespectful to yeah. you, I think you guys got to go down, make an appointment with Jim and Pat, sit down together, work this thing out. Otherwise, because if we walk out there, we'll stick it even worse than them. It's, uh, you know, if you've got wetlands issues that you've got to deal with, you know, again, you've got to, you've got to convince Jim and Pat that there's no issue there. You know, right now, you're not in that situation. We're not going to overrule the Conservation Commission or the building inspector, or I'm not. Understandable. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's fine. So we, we will arrange another visit with, with the both of them. Please. And we will get into detail and more Doug, specifically. Doug with it, have Doug, Doug and Pat okay. and Jim all sit down with you guys. Okay. If you want to go out there and have a meeting out there, set it up for out there so they all know what's going on, everybody knows what's going on, and put it all together. Okay, that that Fair being enough. said, we'll, we'll arrange that, we'll get yep. into that more detailed, and I'll bring the plan sets and we can look at those, you know. Okay. Both CS Energy and CVE has no, you know, no intention of leaving this project with you guys not satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that being said, the reasoning for us really coming here, um, we had, like I said, we had a witness test scheduled, and this is something that's between Eversource, the utility, and the electrical inspector that was arranged after the sign off and the COC of the site. And, um, you know, I know Jim expressed a concern with item 
13 on this special permits. Mm -hmm. So my question for you guys at this point is, um, you know, we are looking to continue with our test with the utility. This is by no means generation of the facility. There will be no power output from the facility. The facility will not be operating, mm -hmm. or I guess use of the facility would be the term that's expressed here. And I'm asking that we be allowed to continue with our scheduled test with the utility and the field will not be operating until these conditions with Jim, with the planning board, and with the conservation commission are satisfied through our visits. Okay, I, I understand that I'm, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. The, the planning board's role is we, we approve the plans. Yep. It's supposed to be built that way. Okay. Now it goes over to the building inspector, the wiring inspector, the conservation commission to assure that it's built in accordance with those plans and in accordance with the conservation's uh, regulations also. We're not, I'm, I am not going to tell the building inspector, the conservation commission, or the wiring inspector what they should do or they shouldn't do. If they feel that they shouldn't be doing this test now, then I, I personally am not going to tell them they have to. You know, I, you, you, you've got to satisfy our local authorities. They're the ones that are in charge of this project at this point. If you need a change to the plans, by all means, come back to the planning board and we will discuss it. But that's that's not what I understand we're talking about right now. No, that's that's fine. Um, not, not so much that. I'm more so looking for some clarity on item 13 on this special permit that was issued by you guys as far as this condition Then I would concerned. suggest you talk to the building inspector and if he's not clear on it, that he sends us a letter and says he's not sure how to enforce it. And then I would be glad to deal with it. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go and, and cross paths with the other building, uh, the other inspectors, uh, because they're the ones that are in control of the project at this point. And you've got to, you've got to get their approval. You know. Nope. That's that's. And if they're not clear with if they're not clear with the condition, then they have to ask us what they they have to ask us to uh, interpret it so that they understand how to enforce it. But that has to come from the building inspector, conservation, the wiring inspector, the fire chief, the police chief, whoever it may be that's in the, the control of the portion of the project that you are unclear about at this point. Sure. Well, th you know, that being said, uh, we, we feel pretty clear that we're okay to commence with this aspect. However, with Jim, Jim had threatened with legal action convince, via email. And convince Jim, the wiring inspector, you know, conservation, that you're entitled to do that. It's between you and them, as far as okay. I'm concerned. Okay. All right. Um, we, are, we are not the enforcing cool. authorities for that construction. Okay. Okay. No, nope, I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but no, no, no. Your I'm role. not going to. I, I'm not going to get mixed up in something that I don't have the authority, uh, you know, under the regulations and under that special permit to do. If you're requesting a change in the special permit, come in with the change. Okay. Okay. No, nope, I don't. I don't think we are. Um, okay. At this point, Christina, George, Andrew, do you have anything just to add? At all? Or yeah, no. Thanks for, the for your time tonight. I just want to reinforce the comment from, from Eric from from CV's standpoint. Um, I'd like to just make a note that it's pretty complicated to schedule all this business that you do with the other source. It took us more than six months to get this this test scheduled out and, and select the date that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to tell us. Wait, wait, we 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 we, we, we understand all that, but it's. It, it, it really yeah. comes down to what our position is or what our requirements are in the process at this point. And, and our, requirements, our requirements and authority at this point is if you want to change something on the plans or in the special permit, then you have to come to us for it. If it's, if it's a, an interpretation issue or a problem with the local inspectors, you've got to deal with them directly. Yeah. No, we're not requesting any, okay. cha any okay. change. We're, we're just asking for permission okay. to do these Can we give these folks this from Jim? Yeah, I have plenty of copies of it. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's from Jim.
This is the letter from Jim. Okay. 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 No, no, we do not. So yeah, this, is, this is the first time we're okay. Okay. okay, well, I would say suggest that you, all of the three of you, take a look at it. Yeah, and we go, were, go speak to Jim. We were going off just strictly just an email and no from the site, visit, okay. so we had no, okay. no documentation really at that point. Okay. We had to help you when I'm here to hurt you. Sure, <laughs> sure, no, understandable. And just you know, to reiterate, both CV and CS Energy are are here to to complete these projects. We have mm -hmm. no financial interests, and we have we no okay. no interest in, in leaving anything okay. undone. So, um, I guess we will continue with Jim and. Um, from there and, okay. and please conservation if they've got if they've got issues too in terms of what's been done in and around the wetlands conservation is please, taken over please, the, please resolve that too yeah sorry. it's a storm stormwater stormwater authority we relinquished the stormwater to conservation now because they deal more with that so Pat's doing that and get together with Doug and Pat and Jim and go from there okay okay great okay. Okay. understandable thank you for your time have a yeah. thank you, thank you. Sorry to keep you in the hot, hot, hot building up. Oh, that's all right. You're running too bad. Thank you. <laughs> you have. You want to tell Jim what to do? I tell nobody what to do. <laughs> do you have the article for this public presentation? I have to read the article. It's they were right together. Here. Thank you. What are we doing now? Uh, public hearings. 0165 Nyes Lane. Okay, 0165 Nyes Lane. I mean, I don't think that was unreasonable. I mean, no, you're no, right. No, you're 100%. Right. I, 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 I told them these exact concerns out in the field, and this is. Yeah. I mean, Jim's the, Jim's the, the authority out there. They've got to satisfy Jim, or Jim's got to issue a cease and desist. I do understand some things on there and the things. Here we go. No, I mean I understand they don't want to slow things down, but you know that's it's not, a, it's not necessarily the slowing things down. I think their their concern was while we were out in the field, Jim did seem unreasonable okay. with mm -hmm. some of the things. But on their end of things, they were also very unreasonable with some of the things we were asking. Mm -hmm. Which I, I told them told them blatantly, I'm like I'm concerned with the visual barrier. We have people that live at the end of the street. There's people that live in the front of the street. You guys haven't satisfied this. this. I mean, when, when I'm being told by our, our town inspectors that there's boulders in the detention pond and there's issues oh, with how the wetlands were treated, I mean, didn't construct basin uh, cleared and grubbed the entire field, filled areas to get battery storage out of the groundwater. Um, doesn't just do that between yeah, okay. you guys. Yep. Okay. With that, I gotta say we go from regular meeting yeah. to a public hearing, right? Yes. Okay. Motion to go to a public hearing for zero and one sixty-five. One sixty-five nice lane. Zero and one sixty-five nice lane. With that, the question. I, I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The Cushion Planning Board, notice of public hearing Thursday, 9 16 21, 6 30 p.m. Fighting Ways Building. 130 Main Street, second floor, Cushnet, Mass 02743. Notice is hereby given that the Cushnet Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on September 16, 2021, at 6.30 p.m. in the Planning Commission office at the Potting Ways Building. The meeting is held in accordance with Chapter 41, Section 81T to consider the following petitions. Proposed form C subdivision of a four lot. Is this the right one? No. No. No, nope, we're on zero one sixty five nine lane. Do you have a copy of that one? No? That was together in the ad. Okay, yep, I'm sorry. So it was three oh one Perry Hill. Then the next one was Proposed ground mounted solar array, zero and one sixty five Nyes Lane solar array installation. Assessors map eighteen lots fifty seven and fifty seven A equipment mass. Proponent R and R Renewables LLC, represented by Henderson Consulting Services. The plans and the company documentation for both petitions are available for inspection at the town clerk's office, Potting Way Building, 130 Main Street, first floor. These were in the paper consecutively, 92 and 9921. If you are here, please introduce yourself and. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members, and uh, neighbors. Um, my name is Robert Naser. I'm a principal at R&R &R Renewables. I'm here with 
Um, Scott Henderson, Henderson Consulting, he's the uh, civil engineer on the project. Also here with us this evening is Ted Chopper, he's the owner of 165 Nice Lane and Francis Mills, the owner of Zero Nice Lane. And with your permission, I guess I'd like to go over the project for the benefit of the board and also for everyone else here and for the folks at home to give a quick overview of the, of the project with your permission. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Thank you very much. Um, so we have a proposed ground mount um, solar array. There are uh, 540 panels each on two separate lots. Lot map 18, lot 57, and map 18, lot 57A. Each of the lots is approximately two acres in size. Uh, the owners are here this evening. Um, the lot 57 is improved by a single family house in the front. It's about 20 feet off of the um, off of the road. And as you can see the proposed solar array is on the back half of that lot. Lot 57A is currently vacant. It's used and leased out. Um, Mrs. Mills has it leased out to somebody who has a garden in the front and some livestock in the back. Uh, just to go over the, the general attributes of the property, um, it's a, they're both narrow law, uh, lots, they're about 130 feet in the front and they go back approximately 750 feet in the back. Um, as you can see, see there's about, we'll probably be using about half of that distance for the solar which will be in the back. Um, it slopes from the high side here which would be the north west corner it slopes to the south east corner of the property um, there's also I think one of the things that um, I'd like to note is there's a change in elevation from this point here to the back of the property is 25 feet so there's a, a pretty good slope going towards the back of the property um, some of the other attributes there is an existing hedge on uh, Mrs. Mills property right approximately where this fence line is it's uh, maybe a 30-foot uh, hedge, existing evergreen hedge there. Uh, to the north of the property, there is, um, it looks like there was some sort of barn or shed there, I'm not quite sure. There are also some uh, storage trailers up the property. I'm not sure exactly what's there, but there's some storage trailers there. To the south of the property, there is a single family home next to um, Mrs. Mills' property. It's probably 20 feet off of Nye's Lane. There's a berm that he, that's been uh, uh, constructed there. And then it looks like maybe some sort of um, construction yard. I'm not sure what, what gets used back there. And then of course to the, uh, to the west of the property, there would be a single family home. I think the closest one across the street is number 172, if I believe which would be approximately in this area over here. Um, I've, we've spoken to uh, Mary Ellen at the Conservation Commission. Uh, we gave her the set of the plans. We're outside of the 100 foot buffer zone, so uh, we, we did do our due diligence talking to the Conservation Commission. Uh, we also were in touch with the Fire Chief, Chief Gallagher. I know there was a question about that. He did review the plans and he sent an email back to me and also to the town planner uh, to, um, saying that he was, he was, you know, good luck with your project basically is what he, he the email he sent back to me. Um, as I said, there would be about approximately 540 panels per array. Um, and I guess with that, I would ask that there was a question last board meeting about maybe the locus, the location. So we, we, get, we put together uh, a wider um, scope um, sheet for, the, for everyone to look at. And I guess with that, maybe this is a good transition. I'll ask Scott to go over maybe some of what he's done to regarding the, the drainage requirements here. And also he can point out yeah. the distances from our array to some of the neighbors. That was a concern at, last, at the last hearing. So I'll back up to this plan again for the record. My name is Scott Henderson of Henderson Consulting Services, um, civil engineer for the project. 
Uh, with regard to drainage, one thing that I don't think Rob touched on is access to the to the arrays. So the intent here is to avoid creating two new curb cuts on Nyes Lane to provide access to the array at the very northwest corner uh, of the 165 Nyes property. Uh, there'll be a 14 foot wide gravel access road as is required by the fire chief that runs along that north property line, curves down to the south and provides access to another 14 foot wide uh, gravel spur between the two arrays. Uh, so that's kind of what we try to work out, minimizing the amount of new impervious area as much as possible while providing that vehicular access. Um, with regard to drainage, the intent is for the majority of that new gravel roadway to be able to capture runoff from that. Uh, and using a swale along the south side of this spur, we're able to capture most of the water from this portion of the site into uh, a newly constructed detention basin. Now, as Rob mentioned, the general topography now, everything flows from this corner down to this corner, so it only makes sense to keep that additional water in that area. So we have some of the site that will run around that basin, it won't capture everything, because if you try and capture an entire site in a basin, it gets exponentially bigger. Um, but it's designed to attenuate increases in peak runoff rates and volumes. So there's a full hydrocad model, drainage model submitted with that, that shows that after development, there's no additional runoff volume or rate leaving the site for any design storm up to the 100 year storm. With regard to what happens to that water once it leaves the property, uh, again, no change in hydrology. Where it goes now is where it's gonna go afterward. Uh, and it leaves this corner um, at the southeast corner of the, the project locus. You can see here, this is the, the town GIS, but it has mass GIS wetland uh, here. There's these big green splotches. And there's a hydraulic connection between there. Uh, that's not a map stream, that's just the intermittent uh, stream that water runs from north to south. So any water that leaves our site, this corner is gonna eventually enter this wetland. In terms of any potential encumbrance on an abutting property, uh, that wetland separates the developed portion of all these properties on Middle Road, uh, and all that stormwater winds up in the same spot it always has, and then continues down to the south where it crosses under Middle Road. Therefore, it doesn't cause any sort of encumbrance on a portion of an abutting property that could reasonably be developed. You're not allowed to alter wetlands without a reason now, so where the water goes now won't have any impact on those abutters. Also, this area is a heavily wooded corridor, so from a, a visual perspective, no one on Middle Road is gonna be able to see anything uh, through that wooded area. So, it's a basic summary of the drainage, but I can elaborate if you have any questions. Um, and I guess with that, um, the only other thing I guess I, I would like to mention is that, you know, of course there'll be a fence around the project as required. Um, and the only, um, oh, one other thing I do want to mention, all of the, uh, all of the, uh, all of the wiring will be underground from the utility pole back to the array. So everything here we're talking about um, anything from the street back to the solar arrays will all be underground, be trenched, and everything will be put underground. So there'll be no overhead wires on the property whatsoever. Excuse me one second. Mike, you all set? Yeah. Go right ahead. Um, so that, that was just the one thing I wanted to add, Mr. Chairman. And I guess with that, we'll we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. we just discuss what we do on a public hearing. We let the, these guys explain it. Then we have the planning board ask all their questions. Then we have the public pro and con ask their questions. Okay, everybody understand that one? With that, guys on the board, do you have any questions? I think the only question we had last time was about where that water was going to run out of the back of the Yeah, park. that was the last time. If you could bring that, that yep. plan mm -hmm. with your sure. wetlands on it on there again. Now, just north of that access road near Nice Lane, the access road near Nice Lane, yeah, that section yeah, from yeah. there out to Nice. Yeah. Is there is there a dwelling on the northerly, on the lot that's just north of it? So there is a dwelling there. There was something there, but it's been knocked down. There's nothing there right now. Okay, so it's not, it's not a house that somebody's no, living in there. right no. now. No. Okay. And now what about to, on the lot that's just to the south of those two lots? That Right, one? so there is a house right here, okay. uh, right up in the very, very front of the, the property here. All right, how about how far is it from that house to the 
a beginning of the solar array. So just the about beginning of the array to the street line is about 350 feet. So just okay. sort of estimating based on the GIS here, I'd say from the corner of that house to this corner is probably in the 300 foot range. What is the character of the land uh, in to the west of the both solar arrays? This. Yeah. So as Rob had mentioned, there's a um, there's a hedgerow fence line here. There's okay. a hedgerow here that's fairly screens fairly well. There's a tree line along most of uh, stone the wall. There's a stone wall here. Stone wall with well. some mature trees along. Is is the it's land that the solar arrays are on now? Is it a field? Is it wooded? It's a field. It's, it's a, a field. field. There yeah. is some. I think that there are some uh, on the plans that uh, I submitted. There are some trees. There's probably. Uh, maybe how many trees do we have to take? 15. There's about maybe 15 trees. Okay, it's, it's essentially a field then. It's, it's a, essentially it's, a field. It's not yes. a heavily wooded lot or anything. No, no, it's yeah. essentially a, a field. I think, um, you know, maybe a hay field, I guess I would call yeah. it on one side, or and then a, one and a pasture on the other it's side. Still, you're still haying the field, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What else is all hay and pasture? To the east of the detention pond, what? It's, I take it at that point it's wooded and wetlands and Heavily pretty pretty wetland. dense. Yeah. Okay. Um, There's a stone wall back here too. Actually, the property line <coughs> is the stone wall back yeah. there. Yeah. And topographically, um, you know, the area where the solar array starts mm -hmm. is approximately 12 feet below, 12 plus feet below the elevation at the edge of Nice Lane. Okay. So it's dropping down, and with those arrays. What's the leading edge nine ish feet off the ground? Eight. I think it's uh, our, our, our on the high probably for this one would be about ten and a half feet to the highest point on the back of the array. So the highest point of these panels is still below the street. On that on that particular plan, this I my eyes aren't so great anymore. Yeah, this is like a, a there's like a blue there's like a blue line that's just to the uh, west of the wetland. No, the, that. Yeah, that guy. Uh, What's that. that? What's that? So that's a hydraulic connection. So that's mapped on the USGS topographic Okay, map. all right. So all intermittent right. stream or not even. It's really just when this wetland fills with water, they'll, they show the hydraulic connection. Okay, hydraulic and it connects the wetlands like together. A, yeah. Okay. So it's a flow um, map. Battery arrays. Do you have any battery arrays? No, we don't have any batteries. No. Okay. That's the future, though, but we don't have any here. <laughs> so it's not required on all sites. Is that what you're saying? No. The backup? No. No. Nope. The battery is a is an option. We don't have that. Gear, okay. Um, I'm I'm all set. Uh, what type of fun are you using? using? Uh, so, I'm sorry. Um, Go right ahead, Doug. Yeah, yeah. What type of fencing are you using around the property? So we would propose a, a chain link fence, a galvanized okay. chain link fence around the property. Okay. And anything to stop the vision from Nye's Lane down to there? Are you going to put any trees up along the front side? Well, to be honest, I, I think there's already uh, a, a, a visual buffer here that is you won't need anything. Okay. Yeah, uh, I didn't bring a photo yeah, of that, but really yeah, it's right here. It's right here. on the, the fence line there. And then you have the house on this one, and then the topographic change. Oops. You know, if you're it's so far below you. You know, it's not like it looms. Yep. Okay. You know, maybe yeah, I, 350 feet. It's a probably a small visual impact at most, if at all. Are, are there any other plans to do anything on the west side of the southerly lot? The west side. over here. Yeah. Not at present, but it's kind of left as is. Yeah, I don't. We don't have a plan. I guess that would be up to Mrs. Mills and her. <laughs> <laughs> whatever she wants to do up there. Okay. So we're not, this is not, you know, the the area, this would be free to potentially, you know, if she wanted to use it for, I think that, I'm not, I'm not sure, I'll ask you, uh, the plan is to still lease it to the fellow that's out there right now, right? Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's fine. I yeah. was just curious. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gentlemen on the board, any more questions? From the public, would you like to? Just state your name and... My name is Scott Furtado. I live on Nice Lane. Uh, I guess ahead. technically representing two properties on Nice Lane. So my question goes, number one would be for the hedgerow. Any um, requirements to maintaining that hedgerow that stays there and doesn't get chopped down so that the visual impact from Nice Lane could be changed in the future? That's, you know, we, I can say from my perspective, we really don't 
the way that the arrangement is it is with the landowners that we don't control that front half of the property so if it would be up to Mrs. Mills, whatever she plans to do so with that. So that could be removed at any point in time, and then that visual impact could change. Is that correct? Presumably, I guess that would be up to her. Yeah. Okay. So there's no guarantee that there will not be visual impact to Nisley. I just want to make sure I got this clear. Well, there may, there will, there, I can't guarantee that that hedgerow will be there. Well, that, that, that's not the question. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to be difficult. I might, the specific question is, is there any guarantee that the visual impact from Nice Lane to the solar array? Is there any guarantee of visual impact to Nice Lane? Like, yeah, I, I, I mean, I would say there's no plan to put any so any sort of vegetation removed. in. That's what I'm saying. That's, the that's what the answer is. Yeah, we got. You could potentially see it from Nice Lane. Sure. Um, that that certainly could be one of the conditions of approval of the project. Okay. That an additional hedgerow be placed uh, to the west end of those solar arrays so that they would be required to maintain that one but the intermediate one would of course be up to the land correct owner. obviously yeah, yeah. I mean, okay sense. all right and i guess my, my second uh comment would be probably towards the board more than it would be to the people that are doing the project and i guess my uh, my main concern would be that we're giving up uh potentially some farmland for solar and i'm not sure that's a long-term sustainable thing for the town like i'm asking if it's if you feel like that's a good avenue to continue doing if we're giving up farmland land that's being currently farmed mm -hmm. uh, for an individual uh to give that up to solar i mean in, in years past what we've seen is the farmland gives way to subdivisions so uh it if there is open land that is available for housing uh typically in this town it's been turned into housing so what you're really looking at is, uh, you know, once the the farm the farming becomes non uh, viable anymore, uh, that somebody would normally come in uh, to put a small subdivision in and put several lots up. So that's really what that's really the either or there, uh, you know, house lots or solar array. Mr. Chairman, could I just could I? address that one you certainly may. so one other thing i think that should be known is that this is there is a termination point on this at some point as well so the the solar array is there for a fixed period of time but it may not be there forever a matter of fact it's going to be a requirement of the board that there be a decommissioning uh bond posted so that when the solar array is at the end of its useful life it gets removed and that there are funds there to be removed so I think it's an interim. You may see it as a long term. You know, if it's 20 years, it may be long term from you. But I think from the larger um, planning perspective, at least my opinion, is that it is a temporary uh, structure on the property. It's not. It's not permanent. It won't be there for 100 years. Anybody else? Yeah, I live on 172 Nisling. Just to Nisling. introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, Joanne Chopper. I live on 172 Nisling, right directly across the street. That house there. I'm concerned about the noise that might come from this. It's nice and quiet now, like Scott said, it's farmland, and I don't have any noise or humming or buzzing from transformers or anything like that. That's my main concern. Yeah, I mean, I can assure you, you won't hear any, that we know everything is silent from the equipment. They do have fans in the, the inverters that are located down here have small little fans, but they're like a fan I don't, on your computer, maybe that's the way I would see, to keep the electronics cool in the in the inverter. So um, there's no know. transformers like in the front. It looks like there'll be a there there'll be, there'll be a pole tr mounted transformer here on the utility pole here, and there'll be a transformer here on this. So I mean I don't know transformer unless it's bad, it shouldn't be making any noise at all. They but should if be it silent. Is bad, then that would be EverSource. You'd have to come out and replace it. Then that's an EverSource. EverSource will own the telephone pole and will own the transformer. So if there is a problem with the transformer, um, it would be ever source, up to Eversource to come out and replace it. No, that can't be put in the back anyway? No, they have to have access to the telephone pole. Um, you know, if it was up to me, I'd say, okay, let's run a telephone pole. To, but, you know, it would be cheaper for us if they could do that, adding, you know, putting underground utility in is expensive, but that's their requirement. They need access to it. It has to have an emergency disconnect. The fire department needs to be have access to the property, I mean, to the disconnect. 
Um, so yeah, it has to be within you know the street, close to the street. That's their requirement. All right, back to 165 Nice Lane. Now, you're not going to put any trees there. Again, I, li uh, I live right across the street. I can see down that field. And you're not going to put a buffer there. You're going to leave the abovites that are on the other lot, the farm lot. But on the hay field, I can see them. Is, is there a possible way to put trees there? Even though it drops down, like you said, I can still see the back of that. Right. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a plan for that. Um, you know, I guess if it's the pleasure that, of the board, that, that's, that's, one of the things that, that's one of the things the board would, would have to consider. And that's the reason for this hearing, so that we hear what the, what the uh, issues are for the neighbors to the property. Yeah, and it's cer it, 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 cer it, cer it certainly looks, at least from my end, that there's going to be an additional screening requirement out there. I mean, the other board members have to agree with that. But. Now, another thing. How often are you going to maintain this? I mean, is there going to be traffic, like trucks going down there all the time? And I don't know. I mean, yeah, no, no. It's, I mean, it's a fair question. I think as little as possible. I mean, the, the, one of the, the great things about solar is that you don't need to maintain it. We keep uh, track of all of our uh, solar systems. Everything is remotely. There's uh, uh, either a cellular or a Wi-Fi connection where we can, we can monitor the output of the system. If something goes bad, Sure, we'll send a truck down to do a repair. But on a general, you know, if everything's going well, maybe we'll do a once a year um, stop just to do a once a year checkup on the system, make sure it's, it's, it's working fine. Now that won't affect our electricity either. If there's a problem there, will our electricity? No, a matter of fact, this is, uh, you know, one of the things that Eversource requires is that this transformer for this system and the transformer over here for th that system, are dedicated for the solar. That's one thing that Eversource is requiring is that the transformers be dedicated for the solar. So if there is, so it should have zero effect on any of the neighboring houses out there. They make you pay for a brand new transformer. That's part of their reasoning is, uh, and the thought process, they don't want to disrupt the electric supply for any reason, even if it's, there is no reason if it's connected so there should be no no uh, disruption of your electric supply related to the solar at all. No, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, my name is Margarita Fatato. I live at one eighty one Nice Lane. I would like to if you could explain to me something. The transformers, how huge that's going to be, and how visible it is going to be because I live not in the next door, then there's a door out there. And if I'm outside in my yard, enjoying myself, that's why I bought the house where mm -hmm. I bought it, yep. to enjoy my greens, my, because I do have a little farm. I want to know how visible that's going to be when I walk up and down with my grandson, my granddaughter, or myself, when I walk up and down. How visible, how big is that going to be? And like, I, like she said, how noisy it's going to be, because in the summer, we have air condition. In the spring and in the fall, we open the windows. Right. And I want to know, I'm concerned, how is that going to be? And if those greens that she, that you talked about between the slopes, I've seen some of those greens. I've been there. I'm the one who told, uh, she got, I got the guy for her to rent, and I've been there. I want to know, how's that going to be close enough so we don't have to see it? Right. I think that, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I uh, just uh, want to know how that close is going to be because if, if, if the trees are like this, because I know what they are, I've been there plenty of times. If the trees are going to be like this, separated, we're going to see it no matter what. You're going to see it. It has to be from the ground up. I know it slopes down. Like I said, I've been there. Slopes down. But it is going to be visible because those things are not small. I, I know what they are. They're not small. I would like to know. It's that, how that visible is going to be, with the transformers and everything else. Right. Um, well, I think that the board is probably going to address the issue with the uh, with the screening. Um, as far as the transformer, they should be again. It, they should be silent. There will be two new transformers. Uh, one is on a pole that's going to be just on the south side here. It's probably maybe 10 or 15 feet off of the road. So there'll be there's an existing utility uh, line and telephone pole system all along that side of the road right here, right? On the west side of Nye's, on the east side of Nye's Lane, there's existing telephone poles. So there will be 
one of the pole, there'll be a pole added on Nye's Lane exactly in line with the existing telephone poles. The only reason they're going to add that is that they can put a transformer on it. The transformer, it's a 167 kilovolt transformer. It's probably maybe three feet high and maybe 18 to 18 to 24 inches in diameter. So. Is that um, like you know, a it's like a transform transformer. Yeah, it's a Is that transformer. Like a regular that transformer yeah. that are yes. on yeah. every telephone, telephone pole in all the neighborhoods. Th there are different sizes. Yep. This will be one of the larger ones, but it is a pole-mounted transformer, so it will go up on the pole. But it's it's like any other transformer. You see them up and down the road, you know, everywhere. Anybody and else? I'm sorry, your other the other question. I mean, it's not going to be some some huge six foot diameter, you know. <coughs> 10 or 12 foot no, long transformer. Right. No, I mean, it's there's, right. a, there's a limitation to how big of a transformer they can hang on a pole anyway. But. Exactly. <laughs> they can't do anything. Uh, anything bigger would have to be on the ground and it's it's a big, it's large. They, ha they come in all different sizes, just, but yeah. I'm sure you've been by them, uh, you've driven by them a hundred times, you wouldn't wouldn't have necessarily noticed that it was, but that's what it is, a pole, mm -hmm. pole mounted transformer. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Please feel free. Just a quick question. What is the um, ground going to be under the panels that get all converted to like gravel? Does the grass go away? Sure, yeah, usually uh, there's grass uh, underneath it. So. Yeah. And that has to be maintained? In the yeah, street? that's part of the maintenance arrangement. Yep. How, how often would you plan to be in there to mow, trim, uh, in and around and underneath the panels. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be mowed like a lawn, so you know, you would do it maybe a, a couple times a season, I would I would suspect. Two or three times a year. Yeah, I mean, just so that it doesn't grow up and get unwieldy and, and interrupt, you know, you don't want to disrupt your uh, your collection, solar collection mm -hmm. either, so. So I think that that would answer one of the questions yeah. from, from the audience. I mean, right. they are gonna have to go in there two or three times a year. Okay. And you'll hear a mower, you know, for half a day, a day, something like that, and that'll be the end of it. I, I, I'm guessing how long how, how long is it going to take them to, uh, you know, do the mowing and the vegetation uh, control? As little as part time well, as I, possible because they're getting paid by the job. I mean, so yeah, they're I mean, in and out. They won't be in there for three weeks. But, no, you know, no. Is it, is it more in the order of a day or two? I, if he if he was there for a half a day, it would be two, it would be a long time. <laughs> okay. They would get it done in a half a day. I okay. Say. So three times three times a year, half a day, uh, and they would be during the day. So you know, it's obviously they're not going to do it at nighttime, or hopefully not at uh, three o'clock in the morning. No, that, no, no, that wouldn't happen. Okay. It would be, you know, just to envision a landscaper somebody going that, in and mowing the lawn. That, that might be something we would consider as a condition is that if you are going to do that, you wait till after 8 o'clock in the morning before the mowers get out there. That's fine. fine. Yeah, no problem with that. That would be the biggest. I mean, from what I have understand from the previous proposals we've, we've heard, uh, the inverter makes very little noise. Once you get beyond 20 or 30 feet from it, which everybody is here, you can't hear it. Uh, the fans are essentially, no one's going to hear that. You'd have to be right up against the inverter to hear the fans. Transformers, uh, properly operating transformer, you don't, you don't hear them. Uh, if there is a noise from it, then you need to call Eversource and tell them that there's a problem with their transformer. Anybody else? Please feel free. That's Just one more carry. thing, too, about the trees. So they're only going to go in front, the, the, the amplifiers. They're not going to go like around the whole thing, because you're going to have a fence, but you're not going to have abivities on all four sides then. You're only going to basically have them in the front. Well, I mean, we don't have it proposed right now, but I guess that would be a discussion with the board. I would say if, it, if the, I'm not sure, certainly on this side, I wouldn't see any reason for that. To the south side, we would try to avoid that because that would be shading on the, on the solar panels. Um, and the north side. But that's where they live on the south that's side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, you well, know, where, where is where is the house that, that, yeah, where, that we're talking about? Where's your where's your home, ma'am? My home. Yeah. Is it's it on this map here? Yeah, the little square box. This one? Down. 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 This one right here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're there. Yeah. I mean, oh, there is there is a existing yeah. tree line on the stone wall here that we're not going to remove, that's going to stay there. Um, that wouldn't really cover it, no offense. 
I'm sorry? That would really cover it. Cover what? Honest, the tree line's not going to cover the solar panels. You know, you're looking at 50 foot yeah, trees, there isn't a lot canopy of... Canopy trees, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. so those are mature. Yeah, those are mature, mature canopy, canopy trees. trees. I mean, I can, I can attest, because I've walked that line, you know, you do have trees there, but you also have, there's other growth in there too, in between the trees. It's not like there's just a tree and there's pristine in between the trees. It's, there's briars, there's green briar, cat briar in there. Uh, there's a lot of greens, but there's but a lot there's of greens. There's a farm there. there that we can't see. There's right. an existing farm there now, and we yep. can't see the farm. Yeah, so it's not like, house. you know, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I know what you're talking about. You're right. It's not one tree here, and then 20 feet, there's another tree. Right. There's some stuff in the middle, mm -hmm. but it's not an abravite. It's not a fence that's going to block that. that. That's my point. There's going to be a line of sight. Okay. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to argue with them. I'm saying that there is existing green greenery there, though. I'm not sure the value of adding something there, but that's a discussion that um, you know would be up to the board to make make that decision if they feel that it's it's required. Excuse me. I know my house is not that close, but when I'm on my driveway, I can see right through the that little house next to it. I can see because my side, my driveway, and I can see like the farm, I can see the cows, I can see everything. The cows are going to be gone some, from there. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to see, you know what I'm going to see? There's uh, solar panels. Yeah, because it's visually, you can see it right through. I live there, I know how it is. I see your point, but I see mine. And you then you're relying on someone else's property to <coughs> potentially buffer that line of sight, which you don't have control over any of the weed. So that burn could go away. You know, that dirt burn that's in the property between the solar farm and the house, that burn could go away at any point in time that the owner decides for it to go away. Right. That line of sight is gonna increase exponentially. It's, there's, there will be some line of sight now, but if that dirt burn goes away, that line of sight goes huge. So you're relying on, you're relying on some protection from something that none of us here have control of. right all i can tell you is the existing conditions Correct. right there today totally that's amazing. all i can say i can't say about the future i i have no yep, I you know none of us can say what's going to happen in the future i'm Obviously. just all i can re report to you is what are the existing conditions are today right. well the, the present right now i can see from my house 172 because i'm in my field all the time i'm a hundred percent farmer and i can see those fields there right now the way it is and if there's no burn it's it's like Wow, I'm gonna see all those things all the time. And it goes a nice family. Next time if you're there, excuse me, next time if you're there, you can come in my driveway and you can look it straight out and you're gonna see what I'm trying to tell you. Straight out. You sure, I'll, I, I'll stop over. Next time we're down there, I will, I'll stop you, over and say hi. You can hi. see it's right there, right straight through. Sure. And you come to my house and I'll show you the same thing too. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. You know, I think okay. I've been, enough times there i know exactly where your house is um you know the driveway where you pull into uh to park here for this lot is a right. little bit your house is actually right i think there. that's it right there right, right? yeah so right across from it um yeah so i, I know exactly the perspective from there that's house. why yeah. the transformer that's going to be there it's like you know i live right there i mean i can hear it And the owners of the land don't live near there, so it's like they don't they don't care. Uh -oh. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, uh, Mrs. Mills does live close by. Well, I think she won't that's... be able to hear it way up there. I no. can't hear that. Yeah. I can hear her names. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? You should put one in your backyard too, Chachi. <laughs> I just got a couple of questions, just for the record. Just introduce yourself, Mike please. Chopper. Um, actually, I maintain the property that's the family farm. Um, she just touched on that. Just for the record, do any of the landowners live on the property? Not that I know. I, I don't know. Not that I know of, anyways. No. Uh, are you planning on moving there? No. So it, this is just a business now, basically. I think okay, it's their so property and they've chosen no, to, to do what they what see fit with their property, I guess that's it. Like asking the board, I mean, I, you look around at all these solar arrays, I know there's a big one in Rochester, I believe, on 105 Mendel Road. They actually have like a three to five foot berm of dirt with six or seven foot out of bodies on it. I mean, if you look, you know, that's something that I think 
the neighbors on each side would require. And I know yeah. she can see it. They just testified they can see everything. And I know you said there's greenery there now. Two months from now, the leaves are gone. There's no greenery. You can see everything. So, you know, if you're going to, you know, ask the board if you're going to uh, protect the neighbors to make sure there's a brim high enough at least 12 foot off the existing ground so nothing can be seen inside there. For the two transformers up front, is there any way you can put shrubbery or sound buffers on the roadside? So if there is a noise coming from there, it does block it. But it's up above. Yeah, the, 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 well, the transformers. The down, what's the box down here? There, there's a meter and a, and a disconnect that are going to be on the ground that have to be accessible and they do not okay, like it right. if you, if you if you screen it because they have to find it there's an emergency to be able to get to the disconnect so they they really do not uh, approve of that now you um I, I was watching the meeting down the hill there and you um, went through the stormwater did they do a stormwater study I know with the new um, conservation we, they still agent. have to go through yep that on the conservation correct yes there, there will be a, a stormwater uh, review done by the Conservation Commission uh, to make sure that there's no increase in runoff uh, from from that property. That's why they've got to build a, a retention or detention basin uh, to mitigate uh, runoff. In this case, it all goes towards those larger right. wetlands, so the chances it's going to affect anybody right. are, are slim to none. Down, down yeah. um, property values. No opinion. How does this affect property values? Uh, I mean, it's. You don't care. Basically. I, I mean, uh, no. I mean, it's. I, I'm not sure. I'm not in a property appraiser. I don't know how it would affect uh, the property value. I really don't. I, you know, it depends. Um, you know, I think it's increasing the value for the for the homeowners. I mean, for the landowners right there. So. Yeah. The solar arrays create a lot of personal property taxes. Well, no, I'm not. I'm talking about the abutters. Okay. Um, for, fortunately or unfortunately, a solar array isn't allowed use uh, in the entire state of oh, yeah, Massachusetts. No, I by, that. Yeah. So, I mean, if there were none, would the property values be more? Uh, possibly. Uh, but there's nothing the board can do to stop the solar oh, arrays. It's, 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 it's an allowed. It's an allowed use. Yeah, I mean, we can we can deal with screening to some and we can to some degree, like and and you know we will take that up between ourselves. We'll pro most likely go out there and and just do a quick visual uh, run around the property. Uh, I mean, we will consider that and we'll do what we think should be done for screening. Will it be a 12 foot high berm? No, it won't be a 12 foot high Not berm. Not a berm, but yeah. 12 foot high with the trees I, on I, top. Yeah. I, I've well, seen there's different ways to screen right, the things. I, I you all you have to do to drive around, uh, not this town, but all surrounding towns, and there's different ways that they're screened. But with the scope of the land, nice lean aside, that's low. You would uh, is see, it going to be yeah. invisible from the road? Uh, probably not. I don't know. There's there's very that's unless why they're unless they. <laughs> I mean, the best way the best that's way to screen them from view is to put them right up near the front of the road, and right near the property lines, and put a screen in a berm right around the edge. Well, then that gives you the, the panels, you know, right next to your house. Right. So, you know, I, there's this kind of a trade-off there. I mean, the best screening is with the panels up close to your house and the berm and the vegetation right around the edge. I, I'm just thinking of one I go by in Rochester all the time. The, the array is very close to the road. They put a, about a six or eight foot high fence up. You can't see it at all. Right. But if that array was set back, uh, you know, Three, four, five hundred feet. Well, then, you you probably are, would have seen it from the road. So, uh, it, like I said, there's a trade-off. If this sticks them back away from everybody's house, uh, you know, we will screen around the edge uh, to what seems reasonable. Or I will recommend that we are going to take a walk around there. Obviously, you people live there all the time. You know very well what it looks like. Uh, you know, we don't, and we will take so a look at it. So why don't we arrange a walkabout? Sure. I don't know. Is this weekend too tight for everybody? Good question. This should be the best one for me. Huh? <laughs> this is the best one for me. That's on the top of the 18th. 9 a.m. good? You guys 
Yeah, 9 a.m. on Saturday. On okay, Saturday. if you want to be there at 9 a.m., can we have coffee, Joey? Sure. Coffee? <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink the tea. <laughs> can I have one more question? Sure. Certainly. Decommission plan now, post the bond. That goes on the peer review, and they determine what the decommissioning fee is. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, but um, it's to remove the panels and the, restore know, and yeah, restore the ground afterwards. Ba base, basically. But the town has control of that. Yes. If the company goes bankrupt, and then that's with, and we have. Yes. We yeah, have it's, it's held in it's held in, a, in, in an account by the town treasurer. Okay. Most, okay. Most of them have been cash at this point, haven't yeah. they? Uh, so as of right now, the town treasurer is only accepting cash. So there you go. There will be a cash in an account to guarantee that uh, it gets cleaned up afterwards. Okay, nine nine a.m. Saturday. We will meet. Is there a place in that field to meet? Um, let's see. Where would the best? Where can uh, we park other than on Nice Lane? Yeah, where do you? Is there a driveway at the house? Okay. Huh? There's a driveway at the house. Yes, park the driveway. Okay, is there one by that field? There's one, there's a There's a little dirt uh, driveway on the, the southern property there. Can we get Yeah, you, can, there, you okay? can stack in you three or four cars. You want to drive in the yard around the house, so you don't have to even walk if you want to drive back to the Okay, no, field. I don't want to drive, I want to walk it. Oh, well, okay. we drive on it. No problem. <laughs> okay, everybody agree, nine o'clock, if you want to be there, I don't, want, I don't want to post it, I don't want anybody to say I didn't have the right time or nothing. It's this Saturday, the 18th at 9 a.m. Any other no, questions? Yeah, one more. My, one of my neighbors couldn't make it today, but he says, is this going to affect our uh, utility bills anyway? I don't believe so. No. So there's no benefit to us, though, basically. I mean, it's not our property, though. Gentlemen, you all set with that? 9 a.m. Any other questions, please? That's why we're having the public hearing. Gentlemen, anything? Okay. I, would make a I would make a motion that we continue the public hearing to... 9 a.m. this Saturday, uh, whatever the date is, and uh, go from there. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. With that, we'll see you at 9 a.m. And is there a motion to go out of public hearing? And back I make a motion hearing? to go out of public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. With that, back in okay. the Thank, thank you. you, folks. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, thanks uh, for getting back on that email, too. Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, you have like a timeline of that's supposed to be done? Uh, uh, fencing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we, uh, I just I contacted the fence company and asked them. I said, you know, when are you guys going to get it? And uh, I have heard as soon as I do, yeah, I will definitely let you know. I know the building commissioner. Back from our commercial break. Uh, continue on here with 301 Perry Hill Road. Is there a motion to go from regular meeting into a public hearing? I, I make a motion to go from the regular meeting into a public hearing. There is a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Notice is hereby given that the Cushman Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on September 16th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. in the Planning Commission office at the Potting Way Building 1. 30 Main Street, second floor. The meeting is held in accordance with Chapter 41, Section 81T to consider the following petitions. Proposed Form C subdivision for a four lot development at 301 Perry Hill Road for Mark B. Francois, applicant proposed. That's all there is. With that, introduce yourself. Tell us why you're here. Yeah, good evening. Matt Leone with Stephen Pigna Leone here to represent Mark Francois with a uh, a lot redivision of uh, property located on the uh, northwest side of Perry Hill Road. Uh, the existing lot is uh, comprised of four individual lots as it stands. Uh, so uh, map 8, lot 25, 25D, uh, 25E, and 25F. Uh, they were approved under a uh, retreat lot subdivision um, back, or a &R subdivision back in 2006. Uh, this is just an overview of the, um, of the area uh, that we're talking about. And I'll uh, move it over to the uh, existing conditions plan. Okay. You guys are familiar with the project already and familiar with the site. Um, the total of uh, the four lots comprises of about 19.35 acres. Um, the uh, land is, is a wooded mix of upland and wetland. Uh, the wetland line that you'll see here has been delineated by uh, Tom Lovett back uh, in November of uh, 2020. 
and um, the uh, general drainage areas uh, on the w easterly side of the road, most of the um, upland drains into this wetland system, this wetland network here, and then drains under uh, Perry Hill Road. Uh, and there's a culvert, a big box culvert by the uh, Rochester Town Line, where it's the ultimate outlet uh, for the property. Along the uh, westerly side, um, this significant upland area here is uh, drained solely to the wetland uh, area to the northeast, uh, excuse me, the northwest. Um, there is an existing uh, single family home, which is Mark's, uh, Mark's dwelling, and uh, it's serviced by a uh, uh, private well and septic system. Uh, we have done um, uh, multiple test pits uh, for soil stability for the uh, uh, <coughs> installation of um, septic system and, and drainage. Um, as you'll note, there is a uh, private way that runs through the uh, southerly abutter up towards uh, bisecting the lot in half and then up to the, uh, the northerly abutter. Uh, it is an existing um, gravel about 12 to 15 foot, foot wide uh, right of way uh, that's been um, has a 30 foot right of way uh, uh, associated with it and um, the uh, due to some of the uh, concerns of the southerly abutter we have um, decided to move our uh, our access to our lots uh, solely onto the uh, the uh, applicant's property and uh, we'll bring up the uh, the lotting plan Let's see what we uh, have planned So as you see, the intent is to reconfigure the four lots into four um, fully conforming lots that are going to be serviced by a 50-foot um, right-of-way. And uh, this, this right-of-way will uh, provide access to the three newly created lots or the three new dwellings. Um, the applicant is going to be uh, continue to access his lot via the uh, existing gravel way and his uh, paved driveway. And um, I will believe the applicants to the north, excuse me, the uh, abutters to the north will also be continue to maintain their access through the existing right of way. Um, the lots as they are created will be fully conforming to the uh, accushionate uh, bylaws for Residence A district. It'll be uh, 60,000 square feet minimum area, uh, minimum upland of, um, of 40,000 square feet. And as you can see, they'll have, uh, they'll meet the lot depth and width requirements as well as have more than the uh, uh, 150 feet of uh, required frontage. Um, so else, uh, to our uh, creating a drainage plan gives you an overview of the uh, full schematic of the full build out. So the idea here is, as we said, we're going to be creating a new roadway off of Perry Hill Road gravel surface that's going to uh, tie into the existing gravel road at this point and then continually northerly. So the northerly portion of the right-of-way will be upgraded uh, to provide drainage and um, a wider surface. We'll be doing a full 20-foot wide uh, gravel surface uh, for the entirety of the way. The, um, it, with the exception of the, the front here where we're marrying into the pavement on Perry Hill, it'll be uh, pavement uh, for about uh, I think we have a 30-foot uh, long paved apron to provide a clean and safe transition onto, uh, onto Perry Hill Road. The um, southerly portion of the road here that um, is going to be newly created will be drained into the uh, wetland, excuse me, the uh, wetland uh, stormwater uh, basins here and then eventually drained out into the, uh, into the uh, wetland system and again out through that culvert that I mentioned earlier. There is a small wetland replication that will be um, created about 2,500 square feet of wetland replication area that will need to be um, installed and that will be done here um, within the right of way that we are proposing. Um, the existing home site, well, which will be bought for, will remain pretty much unchanged. As I said, the access will, will remain as it is today off of Perry Hill Road, continue to be serviced by the uh, same well and septic. The three uh, <coughs> new lots will all be um, on private wells and septic systems. Uh, and as I said, we have done um, percolation tests and soil evaluations, and they are suitable for, for the uh, placement of septic systems on the lots. Um, these, these are obviously conceptual houses. I'm sure there'll be some, some houses with a little bit more personality than just boxes. But the general layout is, is going to be pretty close to what you see here. 
um, just due to the proximity of the wetlands, the offsets for wells, and where we've done the test pits. You know, what you'll see here is pretty close to what will, um, will probably be, be installed um, or, or developed. Um, all of the um, proposed dwellings will have their roof runoff um, directed into Caltech units underground recharge and uh, any of the associated runoff that may be created from the sites will be collected um, from the, uh, the stormwater system by uh, grass water quality swales and end up into the, uh, into the floor bed right here. Um, so the, the initial uh, new roadway is approximately 550 feet and there's approximately another 600 feet of, of, of improvement to the, to the gravel surface here. And uh, all the uh, roadway construction um, will be phased in a manner to allow continued access uh, from Perry Hill to the northerly abutter and to the site. Um, we will do, do the, uh, the construction in a manner in which there will be no blockage for emergency vehicles or for everyday traffic to travel. Um, no um, equipment or stockpile will be done within the right of way. Uh, we're going to be using the area for, uh, which is shown as pond B here uh, for any stockpile of, of materials. And um, the dust from the site, uh, if there is any associated dust as the, as the road is being uh, uh, constructed, will be controlled with a pump truck fixed with a sprayer to uh, maintain a, uh, a safe uh, travel way. Over the detail of the, uh, of the roadway, it gives you a little more of an idea of the uh, newly created road. Uh, again, we have a paved apron here that's going to tie into Perry Hill Road. Uh, there's some significant fill in this area of the wetland um, disturbance. Uh, the wetland re uh, replication area is up here. Over this uh, tight slopes here, we are going to have about um, 60 feet of guardrail, proposed uh, timber guardrail, 31 inch, um, to make sure that there is safe travel and passage along that area. Um, the roadway surface up for the first about 100, 125 feet will be crowned and the storm water will be directed into the basins on either side of the road, uh, the roadway. As we uh, move northerly, uh, move north and, and west, we're going to have um, a, we switch over to a super elevated surface. And the reason for that is to direct the storm water away from the, uh, the, the abutter to the south here and make sure that all the, all, all the drainage is flowing into our pond network. Um, once we transition over into the um, to the newly the, the, the new road transitions into the old gravel surface. Uh, there were some concerns uh, from the abutters about traffic and the possible possibility of that being a a, a crash point or inter intersection, a dangerous intersection. We've added a, a couple speed bumps onto the road to slow traffic down to make sure that people were aware that um, and to slow down and make sure they're aware that there is a uh, a meeting there and an intersection, as well as I know that there will be. Um, plenty of clearance of trees and whatnot to allow for proper site distances and whatnot as people approach from any direction. Um, as it moves over into the, uh, into the existing gravel surface, we will be upgrading that gravel surface, as I said, to the 20 foot, uh, 20 foot wide, and we'll be uh, adding a crown to that roadway to convey the storm water into the uh, grass water quality swales and eventually into the, uh, into the storm water network that we have here. Um, really it on this sheet. I'll flip over to the last sheet. This just continues the, uh, the, the roadway northerly. Uh, gives you a little bit of a better view of the uh, proposed house sites and uh, shows that we're going to continue the uh, crowned uh, roadway surface again to convey the water into the, the stormwater uh, facility. Uh, we're proposing culverts underneath the driveways and um, one thing I didn't mention is that we are opting for a hammerhead turnaround versus, uh, versus a cul-de-sac um, for, uh, for turnaround and, and for access. Um, just make sure I didn't have anything else on that. And uh, the applicant will be setting up a, a formal homeowners association that will uh, maintain the roadway surface uh, for um, regrading, getting rid of washboarding, potholes. Uh, that the homeowners association will also take ownership of the road and be responsible, the, the right of way, and be responsible for maintaining the um, 
the uh, four bays and, and stormwater network, making sure the culverts are clean, making sure that the uh, that the uh, the road the roadway swells and went on a mode, and that that, that everything is, is is working and functioning properly. Um, so there will be a, 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 a an operation and maintenance plan that will be associated with the uh, with the property. Um, we have gotten a peer review. The project has been peer reviewed by S. W. Cole. And we have uh, addressed the comments that were uh, given in that letter. The plans that you're seeing tonight are a um, uh, reflect those comments. And we did receive uh, an email today from SW Cole. They did not submit a formal letter, but they will be coming forth with a formal letter stating that um, that we have met their their uh, issues and have answered their questions. And I'll just quickly run over those just so that we um, we know what we're uh, what their comments were. Uh, the first one was about the uh, drainage pond themselves. They had they took issue with the fact that in the uh, Kushnet subdivision rules and regulations, uh, they are not allowed to have infiltration basins as a uh, stormwater management uh, facility. Uh, so what we've done is we we added some six-inch bleeder pipes in here to um, to allow for the stormwater to drain completely in the storm event out from any one of these basins and out into the wetland system. So there will be not, there'll be no retention or no infiltration through these basins. Um, we've run that through um, the stormwater uh, analysis and we'll still be able to maintain a reduction in volume and velocity of stormwater over the two, five, 10, and 25 year storms. Um, Post-construction will be less than um, pre-existing conditions um, with that. So that was their first comment. We've addressed that. Um, they has, took some issue with making sure that we provided easements for the uh, stormwater system so that it can be accessed and so that um, if there needs to be maintenance done, there's no trespassing or whatnot. I don't think what the issue was, we, we've always had the, uh, the, uh, the easement on the plan, uh, on the lotting plan. It's uh, on lot three. But uh, uh, I don't think that it was clear to, to ask to be cool. So it was just a clarification. We added the note on here just to show that there was the easement there. All the other stormwater facilities, culvert that we're adding here, the uh, ponds and the four bays that are over on this side are all within the road layout, which will be owned by the Homeowners Association. So there is no need, uh, no need for an easement there. One of their other comments was, we have shown on the plan here an edge of water located. What that was was a uh, edge of water of that day. When I went out and surveyed it, we, we had we had standing water, and uh, it was more of a reference point as to where the low spots were on the lot. They were just curious as to whether or not there was an actual water body there, and that, again, was uh, more of a clarification issue. Um, their final point, I believe, was that um, they said that the stormwater management facility will work for the design that, that we have here today, which we agree if there was ever a time in which the roadway was going to be paved the stormwater system would have to be reevaluated to make sure that we would still maintain that um, those those reduced volumes in, in, in runoff. Um, again, this this proposal has been th uh, through the board through a lengthy uh, preliminary process. The proposal is for a, a total of four lots, three new homes on a property that has been previously approved for four retreat lots. Uh, we've addressed the Sun Lee Butters concerns by uh, moving the roadway entirely onto our lot, which has pushed us closer to the wetlands, kind of having pushing us into a situation where we needed to ask for a few waivers, um, which we'll go over. Um, <clears throat> this roadway has a transition from the existing road grade on Perry Hill and Mary back into the existing roadway, uh, the existing gravel roadway. So there was a little bit of a, a, of a fit that had to be done to make, to make this work. And due to these constraints, uh, we asked the board to grant the following waivers uh, from the Cushman Subdivision Rules and Regs. Do you guys want me to go through each one of the waivers? Sure. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Article 2, Required Plan Content, Section 203J, Centerline Stakeout Required. Um, we've opted not to stake out the center line of the road, seeing as though we have to put up the, uh, the full view. <clears throat> seeing as though that over 50% of the road is already aligned and um, during the construction process we will be involved in, in staking out the road uh, and making sure that we're, we're uh, providing the contractor 
with the necessary uh, um, uh, survey control that he needs. So we felt that that uh, staking it out pre pre uh, pre project was was unnecessary. Um, Article three, the design standards, section three o two g, minimum street alignment curve of two hundred feet. Uh, we've got a hundred foot curve provided where the roadway meets the um, the new roadway will meet the existing gravel surface. Uh, section 302H, a minimum vertical curve length of 100 feet, uh, where the roadway transitions back into the, uh, the newly improved roadway and upgraded roadway meets back into the uh, existing surface. Uh, we have a vertical curve that's 45 feet long versus the 100 that, that is uh, typically required by accushionate uh, bylaws. Section 305A, minimum dead end length of 100 feet. I mean, excuse me, 1,000 feet. Um, we have 1,063 when measured from the, uh, the intersection point of the, um, of the hammerhead turnaround. So we're 63 feet over that minimum dead end length. But the uh, trips way, as it's known, has already been approved and granted that waiver. There's already an existing turnaround provided here. Um, we feel that that, that, that waiver is, uh, is grantable. Um, Section 305B, minimum cul <coughs> excuse me, cul-de-sac, 50 foot turning radius. Um, we have opted again for the, the hammerhead turnaround. Um, section 307, utility of planting strips. Uh, the, the planting strips uh, would be along the shoulder of the road and uh, per the requirements they're supposed to be five feet wide. Uh, in the case where we are running along the abutting property line, in order to maintain again that, that flow and that drainage towards the uh, stormwater facility and, and away from the suddenly abutter, uh, we've had to come up tight to that lot line, so we are asking for a waiver from that to get down to two, and in, in some cases three feet, versus the five. Everywhere else it will be the five. Um, section 403, minimum pavement width, width uh, 20, 20 feet of gravel is provided versus uh, 26 feet of pavement, which is typically required under full compliance. Section 403, minimum center line radius. Again, a similar similar waiver to the, to the first one we asked for. We have a minimum center line radius of 100 feet versus the required uh, 200. Uh, section 403, uh, one sidewalk required. Uh, we are not going to be building a sidewalk. Uh, Perry Hill does not have any sidewalks. It would really be a sidewalk to, to, to nowhere. Um, section 405, street grading. Um, roadway side slopes through the wetlands will be two to one versus the, uh, the three to one, which is uh, required. Um, that's in this section here where we're tied up against the wetlands and to reduce the wetland alteration, we have um, reduced our slopes down to two to one versus the three to one. There is, a, we do have a gravel uh, stone infiltration trench here that will take water away from the, uh, from the slopes to maintain the stability of those slopes. And um, there are some cross sections and details. If anyone wants to go through them, we can as far as uh, maintaining those slopes and the stability of those slopes. Um, ground cross section, section 406, uh, approximately 400 feet or 38% of the roadway is super elevated. That's that portion here again that we, sit, we talked about against the uh, Southerly Abutters property line. And that again is a super elevated surface to uh, push the water uh, off of the, away from the Southerly Abutter into the storm water facility. Uh, section 406B, Bituminous curbs, uh, no curbing is being provided. We're using surface drainage, not curbing, and it's a gravel, it's a gravel road. Um, section 406C, uh, drains shall be reinforced concrete. Uh, we are using high density polyethylene pipe, uh, which is common in the industry. And um, section 406D is uh, drains shall have 36 inch minimum cover. The HDPE pipe only requires 12, in 12 uh, inches of cover, which in some cases would be at that 12 inches. Um, we have received word from National Na Natural Heritage. We are in a natural heritage uh, area, mapped area, and they have given us a clean bill of health to move forward and that we're not uh, pro providing any detriment to any um, endangered or, or, uh, or, um, or rare species. And um, I guess about sums it up, I'll open it up to questions. With that as being a public hearing, we get to ask the guys on the planning board first their questions and we ask the public. Okay. Gentlemen? Uh, do we have a list? Do we have that list of waivers submitted to us? Yes, you do. Okay. And it is on the plan as well. Uh, okay. It's uh, on the back of the plan you sent okay. us? Yeah, it is, it is on the, uh, the lotting plan. Okay. And it was included in our package. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, now, just so that I'm totally clear, anybody that has the right to access along that existing ancient way will continue to be able to do so in the future. There will be no reduction in accessibility for anybody that has present rights to that ancient way. Absolutely not. From from Perry Hill Road straight up through onto Trips, what was so called Trips Way. Mm -hmm. If anything, it'll only be improved during the section that we are upgrading. There'll be no restriction of access. About how wide is the existing gravel road right now? Twelve to fifteen feet. Twelve to fifteen, and your areas. the proposal is to bring that improved section up to about twenty feet wide. That's correct. Yep. Okay. And that includes the the leg that goes out to Perry Hill Road. That's Yes, it'll be it'll be twenty foot of gravel the whole the whole way, with the exception of the pink paper. Okay, right up to the end of the hammerhead. Uh, well not right up to the end, it, it's it's just shy. I think it's sixty feet of pavement beyond the um, Yeah, so it, uh, it's, it's uh, actually, excuse me, it's 80 feet, 80 feet by 80 feet of pavement. So it does, it does stop shy of the, uh, of the layout. Yeah, well, like 20 feet or something like that? Yeah, about there, that. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, the board's already been out and walked along there. The, uh, you know, I think at, not tonight, but at a future meeting, we'll address the request for waivers one by one. Uh, we, I understand why you're asking for the ones that you're asking for, but we will have to uh, at some point grant to approve or disapprove the, the waivers that you've requested. Um, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm in the all original set. subdivision, what, what, were the, what, what was the uh, upgrade to the road going to be in, in the original? The original subdivision was a retreat lot subdivision for retreat lots with a common driveway. Okay. So but there was, was not going to be any upgrade to the, to the roadway whatsoever? No, 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 there was not any proposal under the original 2006 yeah. Yeah, I mean, division. Well, yeah, or alternatively, four separate driveways to service the four separate right. roads. Right. Yeah. And now at least we're seeing some road improvement. Oh yeah, yeah no, I, I, again, there's been a lot of discussion about this. It's uh, certainly not an unreasonable uh, proposal for what they're trying to do. Um, I, I didn't look over the plan in detail. There will have to be a note on the actual subdivision plan that gets filed at the Registry of Deeds that in order to request approval for acceptance of that roadway, the road will first have to be brought up to full subdivision standards with no waivers. Yeah. We don't want we don't want somebody coming in later and asking the town to accept the gravel road. That's Absolutely. all. Yeah. And and in order to do that, that plant that note needs to be uh, evident right on the actual lotting plan. I have the uh, note that we have. Let me just see if that is going to suffice for what you're requesting. Um, this is the allotting plan, the one that would be reportable. We have a note that says, uh, note, uh, roadway shall remain private in perpetuity until such time as the roadway construction is upgraded to compliance with the Town of Akushna subdivision rules and regulations. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, in terms of, of questions or comments, I mean, I'm all, I'm all set at this point. Brian? I'm all set. Who will maintain that little stretch at the end of the hammerhead to the cul-de-sac there? Yeah. Up to the owners of the cul-de-sac? I believe it will be the people that are maintaining it now, the, nor the northerly abutters. Okay. Doug, you got any questions? Uh, no. Guys, anybody from the audience? Pro, con, for or against? I want to say Comment, nothing. Yeah. Uh, I'm Maria. I'm the Southerly of Butter. Just say, state your name, ma'am. Maria Amaral. I'm the Southerly of Butter. No, What's no, the address? No, oh. oh, is that so? oh, north? Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, that's, okay, that's fine. No problem. <laughs> um, my question under your comment that you just made, that, yeah. that little stretch, I think it's about 100 feet, right, yeah. from where you leave off to where our gate is. You're saying we're going to maintain that? Um, 
it would be under, I guess, I assume that you're maintaining it now. Well, I maintain you're maintaining the, the whole road. I maintain the, the whole road because yeah. I need to pass through the road and it's been a detriment to pass through the road. So yeah. it's not my land, but I maintain okay. it because I, I need to pass through it. Sure. But that's still not my land and I don't see why it would be. Uh, it's part of the association. If, if, um, if the, I don't know the number of the lots, lot two and three. Yep. Um, if they own where they own up to the middle they would own to the middle of the of the roadway yeah the way the lot is created each side would own half of the roadway so if they own the road then they need to maintain it um, I would defer to you Richard on that question uh, I think right right now um, is Richard, I, Burke, is Richard, the, Richard Burke I'm, I'm an attorney for the applicant um, our view is that you have a, an easement which we can't disturb you know which you've been maintaining the whole road we're going to take over maintaining the improved section of the road as shown on the engineered plan and all the drainage. That would be uh, the responsibility of the homeowners association. But as the easement holder, you have the right to continue to maintain that, that remaining strip that we're not showing on the subdivision plan. So as an easement holder, you have a right, even though you don't own the land where the easement goes over, you have a right to maintain it as you have been. So, we're proposing that you you continue to maintain it. We'll take over the rest because we have to show that on the on the plan as we have that we're improving it, we're widening it, and we have to do that in order to do the subdivision. I don't know. I, I, I direct to, to the board. How it, how is that? That's why I asked the question, who's going to maintain it? It, it um, doesn't make any sense to me if I don't own the land, why I have to maintain it. I've only maintained the road because I've had to travel in it, and I wouldn't be able to pass through otherwise because it was never maintained. So, um, how, do you get to, how do you get to your lot right now? Through the, on the 30 foot um, east road right From now. Perry Hill all the way up through, yeah. up past the end of the cul-de-sac yes. and to your circle. Okay, that's, that's all. Uh, Mr. Burke, I do have one question for you. Will that northerly abutter have the ability to use the improved section of the road from Perry Hill Road up to where it intersects the ancient way? Yes, that's our intention. Okay. Does that they is that going to have to be way. is that going to have to be uh, a, a, a separate legal document or is I, that just inherent in? I mean, it's a private subdivision and a private road. Um, I'm just. Trying to anticipate a war between parties, you know, like, no, you can't use yeah. that section of the road type of thing. We we intentionally, because we understood they wanted to continue and they have a right to veer off and go over the, the southerly abutter at mm -hmm. the end there, they can do that. But we have no objection to them uh, no. going over the improved road okay. along with the other houses to get to Perry Hill Road. They okay. can they can go whichever way. There may choose. there you. We may ask, I, I may request that there be a notation on the plan or yes. some kind of document that supports that. So there's no question in the future. Um, so so my, my understanding is then, I mean, right now, in order for you to get to that lot, you have to maintain the whole 1,200 feet. Yes. Okay. Well, they are going to end up maintaining everything but the last 100 feet. So you're really going to gain quite a bit out of this in terms of of maintenance and you will continue to have the right to maintain that last 100 120 foot section between the end of what they're going to improve and your your current cul-de-sac that's the way i understand this okay but i i i they did give me the option to travel on the new road mm -hmm. we don't want to travel on the new road i would stick you, to and you don't have to you don't have to okay. that, that that's that's fine you can travel on you can travel on that ancient way from now until uh, forever, <laughs> as long as as long as you and I are alive, you'll be able to continue to do that. If you don't want to maintain that first section of the road, uh, the ancient way to get to your lot, uh, and use the other section that they're responsible to maintain for, you'll be free to do that. That's the way I understand it. Okay. Just one additional question: Are all four lots part of the association, or just three? All four. Okay. Anybody else? For, against, pro, con, speak up. Now's the time. Okay. Gentlemen, you're all set? Yep. 
Okay, I would, I would make a motion that we continue the public hearing to our next uh, monthly meeting and uh, discuss with our we will, planner. Are we, or would we be prepared? We're, we're not going to vote on this tonight. Okay. Okay. I was, well, I was just asking what I needed to get ready for for our next meeting. I mean from from what I see everything's been pretty well addressed okay uh, you know uh, the next meeting would be to ask for anything additional uh, okay. that we think is going to be required I, I personally don't see that much maybe that the document uh, that goes along with it granting the rights for the northerly landowner to use that initial improved section of roadway okay i mean even though that you don't want to use that you know maybe you sell the property and the next person says hey i'm tired of taking care of the that other road why do we need two roads you know and that document will make sure that uh, that northerly landowner will be able to utilize all the entire improved section of the road that they're proposing Everybody all set? Our next meeting will be October 21st. You can call Doug to get on the agenda. Okay. Okay, yeah. he'll give you a It depends on how many people we have at that particular time. Everybody all set? No questions? Everybody's happy? Thank, Thank you. you. Is there a motion to go from public hearing back into the regular meeting? I make a motion to go from up for all. Public hearing to our uh, regular meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With that, unanimous, we'll see you guys on the 21st of October. Thank you. Thank Aye. you. With that, continuing. Do uh, you Uh, Yeah, I'll just take them. Thank you. Yeah, I'll distribute the plans around. Thank you. Absolutely. With that, we'll have a uh, planner's update as soon as Doug comes, gets back out here. First, right, Mark? Uh, 21st of October. Correct. Okay. 6 30. Yeah. Right there, Brian? Yep. I'll see. Okay. Mark, do you mind passing me those points? Do you want this one? Yes, please. Thank you. You don't need these other plans that they sent us, right? No, I have multiple sets. sets. Okay. Put that back in your file, Doug, if you want. If you need that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Never trust me with a piece of paper. <laughs> no, it's okay. I make multiple copies for you. I've got one here. Perfect. From that. With that, a plan is update, Doug. Uh, okay. First things first is Morton Lane. Uh, I spoke with you a little bit about it, Mark. Um, uh, Jamie from Zenith Land Surveyors pretty much contacted me. Um, I informed him that the uh, authority for stormwater has been transferred over to the Conservation Commission. Um, he pretty much wanted the board's approval um, to move forward with that and like the approval of the board to go forward to do the stormwater with um, Conservation Commission. Lane, Lane, Lane. Is Broadway improved? That's one where they're extending the road a little bit, right? Yeah. 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 We pretty well solidified that, but he still has to go. Well, 
they they just wanted to make sure they were good on our end of things. And I, to my knowledge, I believe they're they're good on our end of things. No, I always just, thought we had e everything I was the answer. I thought we put that one to Yes. Me. Yep. Uh, they just I'm wanted it verbally stated that the board gives their... Want it verbally or they want it written? Verbally. They, that was the notion I got from our conversation. Uh, I mean, certainly we've had enough discussion about it. The planning board is certainly satisfied with the with the improvements and is there a would motion? recommend would recommend that would make a motion that we we state for the record that we are satisfied with the improvements shown for Morton Lane improvement and that the stormwater review board move forward with their uh, review of the okay project. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Uh, all right. Next topic: the zoning bylaw, special res residential development. Um, we do have a winter town meeting coming up in January. Um, they are looking to pass the zoning bylaw. I've been working on with Jim currently. <laughs> we had a conversation about this. Uh, so pretty much, it's going to be a special residential development, and I've been looking at areas to create overlay overlay districts within the town. Uh, we went out to Rochester and we looked at a few developments they have out there that are age qualified. My recommendation to the Board of Selectmen uh, up until this point has been moving away from the age qualified, leaving the option in the, in the bylaw itself to either go age qualified or more inclusive housing. Um, I've also looked at smart smart growth options that other towns have done, and I've, I'm trying to compare what other, other towns zoning bylaws are looking like right now to formulate the best one for a cushion it. Um, once I have solid language set in place, I'll present that to the board. Uh, I'm still working on that. Still have to go through the public hearing, you have to go through yeah. town meeting. Absolutely. Does, does, does Dartmouth have anything relative to that? They do. Yes, they do. And I, I mean, I, no, normally that's not a bad place to start. I mean, they've got a very, a very, uh, a very good planning. Oh, uh, their, their uh, zoning uh, bylaws uh, are beautiful. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. I've actually been looking at Plymouth, Massachusetts. I don't know how familiar you are with the Pine Hills area out there. I am. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I, I tend to go golfing out there and they have one to two maybe one to three unit condos yep uh they're pretty densely con congested but it does preserve the open space of the land they're beautiful homes it's almost like they made a mini town yes mm -hmm. yeah. they have their own stores yeah. they got their own everything going yeah. on and and i mean i i would heartily recommend that you uh introduce yourself to whatever you see that looks promising by all means go out there talk to their planner you know, see how see how it's worked out. See if there's anything about their bylaw that they would change. You know, it, it that certainly it, it would help in the refinement process. You know, Absolutely. to get back to uh, what we're doing here. I do I do have one thing I believe that I would like to see addressed in January. What we did find with our our project uh, for the convenience store is that the procedure between the planning board and the ZBA uh, for the site plan approval and the ZBA's movement on the, the request for uh, to have the facility there, it needs to be coordinated. Uh, the one that I remember in Canton, basically it says that the, the planning board will, will vote on the special permit for the project with the advice of the planning board and the site plan approval process. So that forces the developer to deal with us first, then we hand over our findings to the Zoning Board of Appeals, then they vote on it. And the Zoning Board will give their final Yeah, that way okay. you don't have the Zoning Board of Appeals voting on something before we we finished our, we, before right. we finished our job here, it's just a, it's more just a procedural thing. Uh, the, I mean, the one I remember is in Canton or was in Canton. Uh, I'm sure there are other uh, examples around here, but certainly the Canton zoning bylaw uh, addresses it in a uh, a decent, uh, well thought out fashion. Okay, uh, there was another zoning bylaw I was going to look at, or not necessarily zoning bylaw, but. Um, in terms of the way we're approaching solar projects and the requirements we have, I was, I haven't been able to dive deep into it yet, but I wanted to nail down specific language on what we're going to require for 
solar arrays moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then I, I discussed at the last meeting as well, um, having the requirement of the connection agreement with Eversource, whatever it may be. Is anybody else doing that? I, I, I just, I don't mind doing it, but I, I've just not, I've not had the best luck dealing with Eversource <laughs> on my little, on my little projects. Forget about anything of that size. Uh, well, that way they, I mean, they'd, I, they'd have to have a connection before they even started their... I know, and, right? and, you know, it could take two or three years to right. get an interconnection permit. But the, the permit we issue is only good for two years anyway. I, I, I understand, um, in which case they'd have to... And we've had a couple of them that have had to come back because the time has run out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't mind doing it, but, you know, I, I, I'm just hesitant to put... To make it that difficult to get through the process. Yeah, no, that, that's just my own personal feeling. I, I would rather see solar arrays than subdivisions. I guess is really yeah. the way the way I kind of look at Can it. Can you put a date on that? Did I mean like one year, six months? For the the hookup from Eversource, give them a point when they come in they have well, to the, have the, it? Well the, the, the special it's a special permit that we we issue. Never, right. Yeah, a special permit is statutorily is only good for a certain amount of time. I believe it's two years. I might, I might, two I might years. be No, it's, it's two for years the, and then... Um, for the solar arrays. It, it's two years unless the building inspector uh, feels that the project is progressing sufficiently uh, to keep the thing open. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's very vague. It's made so that if you start a big project, like a big building or something like that, and it's not completed within two years, that you have the ability to say, you know, I've been trying to get this building built. You know, I've got the foundations in, I've got the, the framework up, I've got it closed in, but there are some things to do inside. But it's normally a two-year a two year time limit. I'll say bleach shoot for last peer review services. I, I would just ask. I would just ask to see if there are any other towns that are requiring that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my due diligence and do some research into it. If we, I just don't want to be in a position that the town's going to court, you know, with one of these uh, <laughs> proponents. Absolutely. You know, now we've got to spend money with on legal fees for something that's. Uh, I don't want to be the precedent setter, I guess, in the state of Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I completely understand. <laughs> I, guess that. I guess that's the short way of, of saying what I want to say. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. I uh, completely agree with that. I'll, I'll look around and see what other other towns are doing. Yeah. That would um, be great. So the budget was approved for the clerk. They approved 19 and a half hours. I'm still waiting to hear if it's set at 21.50 an hour or if because it, I I believe it's going to become a union position. So that would change the pay scale. So once that gets done, I have to post it in-house for a week, and then it will be posted to the public after that week, and okay. hopefully we'll, we'll have somebody the, else in the office. The graces from the selectmen on this? Uh, that the approval of... The 19 and a half hours? Yes. Okay. Yes, the reserve fund, uh, reserve fund transfer was okay. issued. Uh, they also did a reserve fund transfer for uh, office supply line and then um, some software for the computers and GIS stuff and um, Adobe, so... Great. Yep. Um, and then the peer, re peer review services. We, well, Pat created RFQ for peer review services. We were waiting to hear back from the Board of Selectmen's office, but we haven't heard anything. Um, so we might just end up moving forward with that just to bring somebody else on board and get okay. the process a little bit more streamlined. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you, you either you're aware. I know Mark knows I'm going to be. I get surgery next week on my knee, so I'll be working from home for a couple of weeks after that. Okay. And then there is a. Do it in between meetings. Work that well. I mean, I'll be on crutches for six weeks, but we'll make uh, it work. Yeah, we'll make it work. Nice guy. All right. So, I mean, this is not the best. Also, with my father, he'd be. At, Making sure you were there the day after the surgery, <laughs> you know, doing something. So, <laughs> oh yeah, no, don't worry. I'll be, I'll be. I have a laptop already to go for at home, and it'll be connected to my computer here. My phone's connected to my cell phone, so yeah. we're, we're in a good position. So they are looking to do something at Lake Street. I just want to run this by the board, show you guys what's going on. Um, pretty much, uh, 
they want to improve well not improve maintain the parking lot in this area maintain the gravel gravel road in this area uh, eliminate the grass strip in the middle plant native vegetation there's currently a concrete pad over here remove the concrete pad oh wow place parking in the back over there maintain the boat ramp uh, currently as uh, sits there is a pile of boulders that is in the middle over here um, so what the plan is to create a natural barrier between the roadway and park mm -hmm. uh, so placing the boulders along the roadway stacking them to create a stone wall all that's along. how it used to be though yeah but it would just make it make it look nicer okay. give, give people a place to go maintain this roadway create a picnic area here uh, some point down the line uh, potential pergola pavilion in this area so why so I said that about the concrete uh, pad there that's where the old snack bar used to be for the beach <laughs> really that's right <laughs> wow that's good yeah. to know I'll have to go back and look because we, we've been <laughs> well, when I was a kid the building was still there and then one night some kids were sleeping out and we were sleeping out on the island on my father's property and they burnt it down oh so, Oh. Um, you burnt it down, you said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and there's actually the old, um, where the uh, bathrooms were, is right over here somewhere. And actually, the uh, foundation is still there for it. Huh. I just seen Do you it. Mind, can you actually draw that out where, where it, you believe I it? I want to see it's, you know, uh, the driveway that goes out back. Yeah, so that's actually right over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Right yeah. over here. So. It's probably like right in here. I think if you look around enough, you're going to see the old foundation to the the uh, old bathrooms. Okay, yeah, I walked around here uh, Wednesday. I came around, walked the whole site, and took some pictures. So mm -hmm. that's good to know. Yeah, I mean, I remember that, that so clearly. Over there too, by the beach, is it that red thing? This is going to be a boat ramp. Uh, it's an already existing boat ramp, but it's maintaining it. So okay, they have a fire. Yeah, the uh, fire thing is right. Is a, Right here, well, right in there somewhere. They, yeah, they use it to suck the water out of the uh, lake. oh, the lake. Yep, okay, just make sure that that doesn't get messed up for the, the fire department. Yeah, I, I mean, we'll be working in conjunction right. with them and see what they want to want to do. They moving still forward. don't own the, the land, though. They don't own the, they don't own the they, water. That, and we my understanding is that the, the property line goes to the high water mark of the ponds. Okay, that's. I, I, may be, I may be wrong. That's, so, that's always how I, how I understood. I was it. actually told it's like patchwork underneath the um, underneath all the reservoirs, and the way it worked, I guess, back in early 1900s, they were uh, the penny store or something like that in New Bedford. They were selling portions of land. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's what I was in, uh, informed about. So <laughs> I found that really interesting. I, I know as of right now, New Bedford owns it. They wanted to see a solid plan of what we were going to do moving forward. Mm -hmm. This is the best I could do with the software I had at the time. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's that's. Yeah, I still don't know why they retained ownership of that. I, I, is I, that the city of New Bedford? They, yeah. they, stay, they still maintain the right to withdraw water from that reservoir. Right. Yes. I don't know that they'll ever use it. You know, I mean, especially considering what DEP requires for a noose new sources of, of water. Isn't there a conduit down there? There's an aqueduct that leaves there from the pump house, but no. that aqueduct is actually, from what I heard stories, is it's actually collapsed in sections. It, yeah. That's right. That wouldn't be too surprising. I mean, it's very... You're talking about something that's already 100 years old. That's right. I, do, I, I mean, when I, pump house. when I was younger, you used to be able to hear the water flowing through the pump house well, to right. somewhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, right. You're right, because we used to camp there along the road that led to the pump house. We used yep. to actually camp there yep. with my family. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, no, there's a, there's a lot, lot, of lot of history. Yeah. No, let me tell you. Well, well I mean, and I mean, not, not so much there, but that's what happened uh, in and around the lakes in several areas with some of these old subdivisions. Uh, one of them, which is my favorite, that really has no legal access to the rest of the roadway system in town. But they were they were basically cottage lots yeah. for people in New Bedford, you know, to go out there in the summer. Yeah. You know, and but they're still there are still valid subdivisions. Well oh, there used there to be that, uh, there used to be a house here. And there used to be another house over here. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you if you go down Lake Street, 
and you look past where the whites are, you'll see a house that's like way, way out there. Oh yeah. That's one of those, that's the subdivision that there's no legal, legal there's right. no legal right of access to that, to to that, that lot. And those, those houses up there, then there are a few. I mean, they go through somebody else's property right now that owns the Cranberry. You guys all set yeah. with everything? Yeah, yeah, I'm all set. Yeah. I don't know if you guys happen to know. Do you know any who owns this roadway? Sure, it belongs to Talbot, wasn't it? Tabor. It used Tabor. to belong Tabor. to Tabor, yeah, Tabor but they Tabor. sold it. Did they? Yeah, they did last year. Yeah, right? they sold it. Um, but whoever, I wish to think, whoever owns the property now is still... Yeah, because there's houses that are like It's really just there. a right-of-way, oh, though. Yeah. It's yeah. not... That's right. I, I, would, I would say that at the very least, regardless of any legal documents, uh, that whoever owns the land in the back has got the continued right to access, access that along, yeah. along here. Okay. All right. Um, and, and... Listen, you know, we can discuss this later. Let's get yeah. the camera guy. Is there a motion okay, to yeah. adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good.